Good morning. Can you tell me your name, please? Lee Fasiana. All right, Ms. Fasciano, you are here to be arraigned on a charge of probation violation. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Yes, please. All right, public defender. Yes, sir. Yes, Judge, we acknowledge the appointment. We will be appointed <clears throat> guilty at this time. Believe not guilty is entered, set for a hearing. Do you want this uh, set for next week? Um, we could go ahead and set it for next week, and uh, just with the understanding right. there may be. Set for hearing September the 27th. Public defender's been appointed. He'll be up to speak with you about your case and get you ready for the hearing. We set you for the 27th of this month. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there a We need a copy of the warrant. Just start on the pile if you don't mind, so that easier. Thank you, Ms. Fasciano. You may go. Thank you. Good morning. What is your name? Summer Collins. All right, she's on page 65. Washington. Collins, you're here uh, today to be arraigned on a charge of actually you're set for trial. Do you have a lawyer? Yes, does. This one is. Um... I believe Eric Lars. So I'm sorry. This is on the conspiracy case, Judge. So I'm trying to think of which one was her attorney. Jeff Kuykendall. Yeah, he was here yesterday, Judge, and we reset all of the conspiracy cases to March one. But your lawyer was here in court yesterday, and we were unable to get to the jail docket. Um, this is one of the cases that involves the uh, multi defendants, and as a result of that, we are. Um, we've had to reset them for March the 1st. Your lawyer was here and was advised of that date. So your new trial date is March the 1st. Your lawyer will be in touch with you to discuss getting ready to uh, resolve your case or to get it ready for trial. You have another date of February the 20th that will be for a status as to uh, trial preparations. All right, thank you. Your Honor. Yes. We have the rest of the females in route, sir, to be just about a minute. Right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good morning. What is your name? Lauren Delfino. All right, Ms. Delfino, you are here to be arraigned on a charge, an, an indictment charging with have, being a felon in possession of a weapon, aggravated assault, vandalism, violation of an order of protection, possession of fentanyl, possession of methamphetamine, possession of cocaine, and simple possession of a control of a Schedule II drug. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Um, I need one, sir, Your Honor. Public defender? Yes, Your Honor. The public defender will be appointed. Wait a second, Your Honor. Um, 
Just for the record, Judge, and, I, and this is what we know, there's a co-defendant to this case, Shane Talley. It appears to be a drug charge, and we have previously represented Talley on similar charges. So you I don't previously know, represented who? Uh, the co-defendant in this case okay. on, on other drug charges that appear to be similar to this case. Again, we can accept the appointment and look further into it. I just wanted to well, raise I think that. It's not an automatic exclusion or you know, conflict in my opinion. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and appoint your office and then let you explore whether or not ethically there's an issue. And if there is, we'll resolve that. But let's go ahead and put you in place right now. I believe there's been a waiver of the rain, a waiver of the reading of the indictment and a plea of not guilty is entered. A public defender is appointed. January 17th will be the trial date. January 12th will be the last day to enter a plea. Thank you, sir. I have received a copy of the indictment and I'll receive that waiver. Right, thank you. Thank you. The public defender will be up to speak with you about your case. Thank you. Wait, what is your name? Hi, uh, Jen. All right. Jessica Hudgens, is that correct? Yes, sir. Ms. Hudgens, you're here to be arraigned on a charge of probation violation. You have the right to have an attorney. Do you wish to have one appointed for you? Yes, sir. And I'm going to appoint the public defender. Yes, Judge. <coughs> I mean, um, this appears to be, we accept the appointment. Um, and then uh, for Andrew, a plea of not guilty. And then for purposes of the, when to set this, I understand based upon looking at the warrant before court that this is based on new charges. And I'm not sure when the new charges are set. We could either leave it on for status on the 27th or set it out for the uh, November the well, OP date. Let's go ahead and put it on the November date because of the simple fact that it, obviously if it's not set for trial this month in front of me, then it's not. It's still going to be beyond us. So, yes, Judge. That would be November the 27th, I think. Correct. Yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, wait. November 28th is jail. All right. Sorry. November 28th. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll be up to speak with you. Thank you. Good morning. What is your name? Deanna Bridges. <clears throat> Ms. Bridges, you're here to be arraigned on a charge of driving under the influence of an intoxicant evading arrest revoke license, second offense, resisting arrest, disorderly conduct, and having open container. Uh, you have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Yes. Public defender will be appointed. Yes, Judge, we accept the appointment uh, as well, and acknowledge receipt of the indictment, way form a reading and enter a plea of not guilty at this plea time. Not guilty is entered, except for trial January the 16th, 2024. Last day to enter a plea will be January the 12th. Your lawyer will be up to speak with you and get you ready for trial. Thank you. Good morning. What is your name? Heather Gamble. Page 77. One of Mr. Flanagan's cases, Your Honor. Mm 
All right, Ms. Gamble, your lawyer is Mr. Flanagan, and he is in he's tied up in another trial, um, but he has filed a motion to continue your cases. So what day are we continuing Mr. Flanagan's cases to? September 26th. All right. Ms. Gamble, your lawyer has asked that we set all of his cases on September the 26th to see if they can be resolved. If not, they will be, uh, they'd be the 27th, actually. No, we want it on the 26th, don't we? She also has an arraignment on the docket, Judge, it looks like. Right. <clears throat> Thank you. She is to be arraigned on a charge of probation violation. So, standing again for Mr. Flanagan, do you wish a formal reading of that indictment? No, Judge, we'll waive formal reading, enter a plea of not guilty. Plea of not guilty is entered on that, and we'll set it all for September the 26th and let Mr. Flanagan let us know when he's Sir, I have, a, I have a question, please. All right. Um, I was actually wanting to go ahead and plead to my violation. Um, that amendment was, I was violated in February. I'm sorry, go ahead. Ms. Gamble, I'm going to ask you to not say anything right now that could hurt you in your case and talk to Mr. Flanagan before you do this. I have, I have spoke to him and that was the plan with him yesterday. I got put off to today from yesterday, but that was actually the plan to ask while I was being arraigned on the amendment to the violation, if I could go ahead and plead to the violation. My time in jail will actually be complete once I get my sentence into effect. Well, your lawyer's not here, but I will let Mr. Wainick, who's trying to help him, try to contact Mr. Flanagan. Your Honor, that, that, we'll talk about Mr. Flanagan. That was his, it, that was his plan was to, her to admit the BOP and fight the new charges, but he, she was going to admit the new BOP and put it into effect. All right. I have that in an email. And I'm told that the district attorney confirms that that's what Mr. Flanagan's plan was with you. Um, so let's go ahead and ask you to raise your right hand. And let me place you under oath. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this case to be the truth and nothing but the truth. Say, so help you God. Yes, sir. We're good. We're good. All right. You are, would you state your name for the record, please? Heather Gamble. Ms. Gamble, you are represented by Mr. Flanagan, but he is tied up in another case. Uh, Mr. Roger Wainick of the Dixon County Bar is standing in for Mr. Flanagan, but a district attorney and you have both advised me that Mr. Flanagan's advice to you and, and instructions to you were that you were to enter a plea of guilty to the charge of probation violation and go ahead and put your sentence into effect. So I wanna make sure that that is your voluntary uh, decision. Is that what you wish to do? That's correct, yes, sir. Do you understand that you have a right to plead not guilty and to have a hearing in this court where the state would be required to prove that you had to the legal standard that you had violated your probation? Yes, sir, I do. Do you understand that you would have the right to have a lawyer and to have one appointed for you if necessary? Yes, sir. Do you understand that if you went, uh, had that hearing and I found you guilty, you could appeal whatever I did in your case to the Court of Criminal Appeals and have a lawyer appointed to help you with that appeal? Yes, sir. Do you understand that? By entering this plea of guilty, you're waiving your right to that hearing to an appeal. All I'm going to do is revoke you to start serving your time with credit for all your time. Yes, sir. You understand everything I've explained to you? Yes, sir. <clears throat> and do you wish to waive your right to that hearing and go ahead and, and uh, plead guilty to the violation of probation? Yes, sir. All right. And upon your plea of guilty, I find you guilty. Order that you be revoked to begin serving your sentence with credit for all your time served. All of your remaining cases that uh, you have with Mr. Flanagan, which are the new charges, are going to be set for September the 26th for Mr. Flanagan to get a new trial date. I don't know that you will have to be here on that day, but he will be in touch with you to let you know. All yes, right? sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. What is your name, please? Jessica Johnson. All right. <clears throat> Page 86. Johnson, you're here to be arraigned. I'm sorry. No, you have Scott Saul as your attorney. So Yes, sir. Um, is this is one of the conspiracy yes. cases? Yes, Judge. Mr. Yes. Saul was here yesterday, and and uh, all of these cases that are the 27 defendants are being reset trial on March the first. 
So your case as well has been set for March the 1st of 2024 for trial. And the last day to enter a plea will now be February the 20th of uh, 2024. Mr. Saul will be in touch with you to talk about your case and see whether or not it can be resolved by agreement or going to go to trial on the 1st. Okay, thank you. Good morning. What is your name? Tana Ledford. Ms. Ledford is on page 87. Your Honor, this is one of the ones that's continued with the other conspiracy cases. All right. Mr. Lockhart is your attorney and he is here in the courtroom and it is uh, because this case is one of the multi-defendant cases, those have all been continued. Uh, lawyers have been advised of that fact. They're now set for March the 1st of 2024. The last day to enter a plea and status will be on February the 20th. And of course, if Mr. Locker works something out for you, then it can be taken up earlier than that. But those are the dates that we now have. March 1st for trial, February 20th, 2024 for status and possible plea. Thank you. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, what is your name? Amber Muhammad. Right. This is on page 91. <clears throat> Ms. Muhammad, you are here to be arraigned on an indictment charging you with theft, criminal information, uh, evading arrest, obedience to a traffic control device, uh, speeding, improper lane change, reckless driving, failure to maintain lane control, and a seatbelt violation. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Um, Jake Locker is my lawyer. Okay. Ask Mr. Locker to step in for just a second. Mr. Locker is here. Let me confirm that with him. This is Amber Mohammed. He, she says you are her lawyer. Have you been retained? I have, and um, she's been accepted into drug court, and uh, hopefully we'll get a disposition before too long where we can go ahead and send her to Synergy for you. All right. This is for arraignment, so do you wish a formal reading of the indictment? Way formal reading, enter plea of not guilty. Your plea Honor. of not guilty is entered. Mr. Lockhart is here in the courtroom with us. He'll be given a copy of the indictment. Plea of not guilty is entered, set for trial March the 7th. There uh, will be a last day for an entry of a plea will be February the 20th of 2024. Mr. Lockhart is going to try to get you into the drug court program and he'll be in touch with you about that procedure, okay? Okay, thank you. That plea date of January 12th will no longer be applicable. Plea date will be February 20th. Um, Harvey, come on. Good morning. What is your name, please? Margaret Myatt. All right, Ms. Myatt is on page 92. All right, Ms. Myatt, you're here to be arraigned on a charge of probation violation. Uh, you have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Yes, sir, I do. All right, we're going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Judge, we uh, accept the appointment. Uh, enter a plea of not guilty at this time. Acknowledge receipt of the warrant. Would it be, if it, I'm not sure what the basis for the violation is. So, let me see the affidavit. Please. Okay. 
It is a misdemeanor violation. This is Miss Margaret Maya. It's a misdemeanor violation, and it's alleged that she has failed to report since February the sixth, and has failed to pay fines and costs, and uh, failed to pay probation fees. Judge, that is the basis. Okay, Judge. Uh, then we can set this for um, the VOP docket this month. September the twenty seventh. Thank you. We're going to set you, we've appointed you a lawyer, and uh, he's been given a copy of your affidavit of violation of probation, and we've set you for a hearing on September the 27th. That's next week, okay? Yes, sir. Are you telling me the name of my lawyer? Well, there are three different district uh, assistant public defenders, all handsome young men who are sitting at a table. With me. <laughs> I would tell you that he's the guy with the chin whiskers, but all three of them have chin whiskers, so... <laughs> I can only tell you that it will be one of those three, either Mr. Yes. Sensen, Mr. Howard, or Mr. Stevens. When they come in, if they've got a beard and they've got, uh, they come in and they've got a beard and they say they're a public defender, you take them. <laughs> yes, right? sir. Good. Thank you. I want you to think that was sexually harassing any of the three of you by saying that. Normally we color coordinate too, but. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Myatt. You may go. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Stay ready on that, Mr. Brooks. Just let the jail know to hold where they are until we finish with this hearing. Yes. Your Honor. Yes, sir. We're going to take up a, um, an inmate who's here, Jimmy Ewell, on a motion for new trial. It shouldn't be more than 15, 20 minutes or so, and then we'll get back with you about bringing the next inmates in, okay? And for, sir. That's, I was just going to let you know that's all the females, and we're ready to start with the males when you are, sir. As soon as we, let, as soon as we finish, Officer Howell will let you know we're ready, okay? All right, sir. Thank you. All right, this is the state of Tennessee versus Jimmy Ewell, the defendant's motion for new trial. Stay ready. Yes, Your Honor. Defense ready? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Lockwood, is your motion? <clears throat> First, Your Honor, we'd move uh, for a new trial based on uh, the evidence not being sufficient. This was a case essentially where it was the victim's word uh, against uh, my client's word uh, who denied any intentional misconduct. The victim I submit in this case uh, was not credible she was caught uh, lying on the stand multiple times during motions and trial um, denying that uh, she was the young lady uh, LU in a child advocacy video when clearly uh, it was her uh, I submit that there was no basis to find her credible in this case and that the evidence was not sufficient. Secondly, uh, submit that the court erred in not allowing uh, the defense to get into a, a prior statement by LU where she alleged that a brother had 
sexually abused her um, and anally penetrated her, which she not only recanted, but recanted on the witness stand and said that that never uh, happened. We submit that should have come in for two reasons. One, um, as set out in the hearing, that um, that she made this serious allegation uh, and then said it didn't take place. And then uh, secondly, Your Honor, the allegation that she had made against her brother in this trial and during the motions is the same brother she said suggested to her that my client may have committed uh, anal rape on her. Very similar allegation. And that was not an allegation that she had immediately made. And she said that her brother said this may have happened to her. And that's when she remembered that that particular incident of child rape has taken place. So we submit it should have come in, especially since um, this same person she'd made the allegation against suggested to her that my client had anally raped her. Mr. Brooks. Your Honor, first addressing the evidence at trial, in light most favorable to the state, there's more than enough proof to make it to the jury and the court, and the court uh, rightfully so, denied the defense the motion for uh, motion for judgment acquittal uh, before the defense, uh, before the defense's proof. Um, the victim, LU, testified that she woke up in the middle, of, she was sleeping in the floor next to her parents' bed and she woke up in the middle of the night to her, her father, Jimmy Yule, fondling her breast. Jimmy Yule later um, corroborates that story in an interview with his own admissions, um, stating that he woke up with his hand on her breast and that he immediately took it off and that he must have been confusing it with his wife. Now, the jury obviously did not find that excuse credible. The court later at the sentencing hearing did not find that excuse credible in, in implementing his sentence. That, that that in of itself is more than enough proof to make it to the jury on that count and the jury uh, found the defendant guilty of that count. In addressing the 412 motion that happened last year in November, the court correctly ruled um, in favor of the state in that motion. The court found that um, some, some time had elapsed between, um, between those allegations, uh, seven to eight years. Um, the court took that into, took that into a uh, um, to factor um, the, the the traumatic effect it had on the victim that particular hearing um, the victim stormed out of the courtroom the court took a great note of the trauma um, the trauma that um, that impacted the victim just by rehashing all of that the court found limited pro probative value but found that it, the prejudice outweighed the, the limited probative value that it, that those statements had and the court correctly um, correctly ruled that those statements were not to come in unless um, further uh, credibility was raised at trial and it simply was not. Mr. Lockhart, anything further? Nothing further, Your Honor. <clears throat> Let me first then address the uh, issue of the sufficiency of the evidence. Um, in this case, the court is uh, aware and, and takes notice of the fact that the defendant was actually charged in the superseding indictment that was entered in this case that went to trial <clears throat> with a five count indictment he was uh, convicted or he was uh, charged with aggravated sexual battery on three different occasions also with rape of the child and with incest and in the at the trial of this case uh, there was testimony that at least as to most of those if not all of those charges but the jury weighed all of the evidence and instead of finding the defendant guilty of all of those charges, uh, found the defendant guilty of the sexual battery charge um, that was substantiated in this court's opinion by the defendant's own version of the events of his hand being on the child's breast. But there were other instances where the child said that she was uh, sexually assaulted by the defendant. Um, I think that during the trial, the jury weighed the evidence, weighed the testimony and demeanor and uh, of the witnesses and 
made a determination of their own as to what portions of the state's case they believed had been proven beyond a reasonable doubt. And therefore, the court is of the opinion that there was sufficient evidence to sustain the jury's finding in this particular situation. As to the 412 uh, motion and um, the grounds that the defendant has raised, um, the court entered a written order back in January of this year after that 412 hearing and after a review of all of the uh, evidence and the, the law in the case. <clears throat> and I entered a written order that I think is instructive to uh, probably go back and, and for the record in this, this consideration of this motion, uh, reveal or, or at least address that. The um, 412 of the rules of rule 412 of the rules of evidence provide that as evidence of a specific instance of a victim's sexual behavior can be admissible except is inadmissible rather except in very limited circumstances. In this case, the defendant sought to introduce the evidence under 412 sub section C4 uh, two to explain the victim's knowledge of sexual matters. That was the reason why uh, the evidence was sought to be introduced. The proof of trial <clears throat> and at the hearing was that the statement sought to be introduced was made by the victim when she was only five years old and during a prior investigation, not the investigation in this particular set of circumstances, but a prior investigation. At the time of that hearing that we had on the 412 motion, the victim was now 17 years old. There was 12 years difference between her age then and now. <clears throat> when shown a video of that prior statement, she acknowledged that it was her, but she had, I mean, I realized there was a prior hearing where she bolted off the stand and was very traumatized by it. Um, but at, a, at the final hearing of that, she acknowledged that it was her, but she didn't realize how she looked at that age. Uh, she also adamantly denied that her brother had touched her inappropriately. And then the present indictment uh, charged that the defendant committed those offenses in early 2017 and 2018 when she would have been around 12 years old. There was therefore at least a six to seven year gap between the prior statement and the present allegations. When I considered the defendant's motion, <clears throat> I uh, looked to the uh, rule itself and to the case law on it. And there's an advisory commission to the rule 412 that that makes a, a salient point here. And I quoted this in my ruling and I'll quote it again. This provision also permits the proof of the source of knowledge of sexual matters, which is the basis upon which the defendant sought to introduce here. It will most frequently be used in cases where the victim is a young child who testifies in detail about sexual activity. After adding that a defendant may want to disprove any suggestion that the child acquired sexual knowledge from the encounter with the accused by introducing evidence proving the child learned such knowledge through sexual activity with third parties. Those comments provide that the court must also consider the impact of such evidence on the victim. I went on to state that <clears throat> Rule 412 provides that the court should consider whether a probative value of the evidence outweighs its unfair prejudice to the victim even if the evidence meets the rules criteria. Again, the comments section of that was informative and I quote it, after hearing the court must balance, after the hearing, the court must balance the evidence's probative value against the harm that disclosure will cause the victim. This balance includes consideration of the harmful effect the proof may have on the victim. When I considered all of those comments and the evidence in this case, I found that <clears throat> They arose, the allegations arose in December of 2017, January 2018, that she, when she would have been 12 to 13 years of age and a span of seven to eight years would have passed since the original statements that the defendant was seeking to introduce. When the victim was at this uh, level of the trial and, and testifying, she was 17 at the time of the hearing on the 412 motion, 12 years after her statements that the defendant sought to use. She was not a young child who will be testifying in trial. I observed the traumatic effect that the victim had, uh, that testifying had on the victim at the hearing, and I found that allowing the introduction of such evidence would be extremely detrimental and prejudicial to the victim. Uh, based upon the span of the years between the proposed statement and the allegations in this case, I found that the evidence, while relevant to some extent, its probative value was clearly outweighed by the prejudice to the victim. 
Further, I found that the introduction of such evidence would not be directly relevant to the 17-year-old victim's sexual knowledge as she testified at trial. <clears throat> I considered the use of the statement for impeachment purposes, but found because the statement was not regarding any of the issues and in, in factors in this case, it would be impeaching the victim, um, the witness victim on a collateral issue. But I also ruled that if the credibility of the victim was fairly raised at trial, the court would consider allowing such evidence for impeachment purposes only, but a jury out hearing would be required before the statement was allowed. There was no such jury out hearing and no request for impeachment of the, of the witness. And for that reason, uh, that statement never came in. Um, my recollection of the evidence was that there was much of an effort made by the defense to impeach the witness's credibility and uh, that the jury at least considered that, but nonetheless found uh, the defendant guilty. And therefore, I find that my ruling on the 412 motion was legally correct. And therefore, the motion for a new trial on both the sufficiency grounds of uh, sufficiency of the evidence and the rule 412 motion is respectfully denied. One other matter, Your Honor. This was a case that I had uh, started when I was the public defender and I kept it in private practice. The public defender's office has agreed, uh, subject to the court's approval, take this matter up on appeal. And I would request that they be. I understand what you're saying. I don't mean to cut you off, but yes, yes I understand where you're going. And I agree with you that the public defender should be appointed to represent Mr. Ewell on appeal. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. All right, we're ready to go back to the jail now. Just for the record, Judge, we acknowledge the appointment in that matter. All right. Thank you. Is Mr. Wortham in custody or he's here? He's here. All right. Bring up Mr. Wortham. Anybody know what page? Oh, I'm sorry. He's on page 58. At the jail, if you'll bear with us, I'm going to take up a matter here in the courtroom, and then I'll be right with you. Yes, sir. Please, court. This is a judicial version of the 413313 uh, amended charge of attempted aggravated assault. All right. I have been handed a document indicating Mr. Wortham is going to enter a plea of no contest or no law contendere uh, to the amended charge of attempted aggravated assault. And count two of that domestic assault would be dismissed. He would receive a sentence of two years, suspended probation, and have no contact with the victim. This would be entered under 4035.313 of the judicial diversion statute. Mr. Wortham, raise your right hand. Let's place you under oath. Can you tell him, please, swear or affirm the testimony in this case? The whole truth, the whole truth. State your full name for the record. Michael Todd Wortham. Mr. Wortham, you're here today on a two-count indictment that I've just covered with you what the agreement is, but have you seen or been shown a copy of those charges and gone over with the, Mr. Vaughn your no, uh, range of punishment that you're facing as well as any possible defenses you might have to the state's evidence? Yes, sir. Well, it's indicated you want to enter a plea of, of uh, no contest. A no contest plea means that you understand what you're charged with 
you understand what the state's evidence would be. You're not going to admit you did anything wrong, but you're not going to deny it. And then the state's going to tell me what the facts would be at trial so that I may enter a finding of guilt under this diversion statute. Do you understand that? Yes. Sir. All right. And divert, the judicial diversion statute is just simply a statute that says because you have no prior criminal record, and this is the first time that you are uh, going to be in court on a case like this, we're going to place your case off to the side, divert it off to the side, and we'll put it on hold for the period of time that you're on probation. If you're successful in your probation and do everything you're supposed to do, then you can come back in two years and apply to have your record expunged. It won't happen automatically. You'll have to take the steps to do it. If you, by contrast, violate the terms of your probation, then you have to come back before the court and you could not only be made to serve this sentence and it would become a permanent record and would be there on the record, the conviction would be there to make more severe the punishment you'll receive in the future, but you could be re-sentenced within the range for this offense um, and, and get more time potentially. All depends on how you do on probation. You understand that? Yes. Sir. All right. Do you understand, however, that you have a right to plead not guilty and to have a speedy and public trial by jury? Yes. You understand if you went to trial, you would have the right to have a lawyer and to have one appointed for you if necessary. You understand that if you went to trial, you would be presumed to be innocent until such time, if ever, the state proves your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt to the satisfaction of all 12 jurors and their verdict would have to be unanimous before you could be convicted. Do you understand that if you went to trial, you and your lawyer could confront and cross-examine every witness the state might call to testify against you, and you could bring in your own witnesses by the use of a subpoena. You understand that if you went to trial, you would be presumed to be innocent. You would not have to testify or prove anything, and no inference of guilt would arise because you did not testify at your own trial. You understand that if you went to trial and you were found guilty, you could appeal the conviction and the sentence imposed to the Court of Criminal Appeals and have a lawyer appointed to help you with that appeal. You understand that by pleading no contest, you're waiving your right to that trial and to that appeal. All I'm going to do is approve what your lawyer has worked out. And you, I need you to speak up just a little. We're reco yes. recording this, so if you'll just speak up a little louder, please. Do you understand <clears throat> what I've explained to you about whether or not this will become a permanent conviction or, or will be removed from your record? It depends on your performance on probation. You yes, sir. That? You also understand uh, everything I've explained to you thus far? Yes, sir. Is your decision to plead no contest today voluntary? Yes, sir. You any forcing you to do this against your will? No. Sir. You understand I have to have facts presented to me to be able to find make a finding that will allow this plea to go forward. Yes, sir. And I want you to listen as the state tells me what their evidence would be if this case went to, to uh, trial. Your Honor, if this case had gone to trial, the state would have put on witnesses to show that back on December the 24th of 2022, um, an altercation occurred between Mr. Michael Wortham and his, um, I, I believe they were in the middle of a divorce, Tanya Wortham, that Ms. Wortham had been, during this divorce, she'd been moving from place to place, hotel to hotel, um, in, in an effort to avoid being in contact with Mr. Wortham. Ms. Mrs. Wortham stated that Mr. Wortham had been stalking her on December 24th, 2022. Mr. Wortham came to where she was located, which was at a friend's home, pulled up in the in the driveway and pointed a pistol at her. He then left. He didn't. He didn't left the uh, residence, and they called 911. Mr. Wortham, I'm not asking that you agree with the accuracy of those facts, but do you understand that's what the state's evidence would be at trial? Yes, sir. You still wish to enter this plea under this agreement? Yes, sir. Are you satisfied with your attorney's services? Yes, sir. I feel like Mr. Vaughn has done a good job of representing you competently. Mr. Vaughn, do you know of any reason? No, oh, Your Honor. All right. Michael Wortham, then in docket number 2023-CR81, upon your plea of no contest to the amended charge of attempted aggravated assault, I order that you be placed on probation for two years to have no contact with the victim. This will be placed on probation under 4035-313 of the Judicial Code, also known as Judicial Diversion, and uh, you order to pay the court costs, is that correct? All right. He'll be ordered to pay the court costs. Count two is dismissed as part of the agreement. He will need to see the probation department before he leaves. Thank you, Honor. Probation is not here. This is the card. Their office is directly across the street. Call them before you leave the parking lot. Okay. Thank you, Honor. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, we'll go back to the jail now. What is your name, sir, at the jail? Uh, Gary Baker. 
Becker's on page 60. <clears throat> Your Honor, his attorney was here as well and yesterday, and this is again part of the conspiracy case. Mr. Scruggs, your attorney was here yesterday when we were unable to get to the jail docket, and your case, along with all of the other 27 defendants, uh, has been reset for March the 1st of 2024, and your lawyer was aware of that, and uh, we are now setting a date of February the 20th as a status and last plea day. And then March the 1st will be your trial date, along with all of the other defendants. That allows your lawyer to get more information from the state and discovery and, and go over all of the uh, reams of information that will be involved in your case. And Judge, Good. we did do an agreed order for a bond. Um, however, I'm still reviewing the source to make sure that it fits, and then we'll submit it to the court. Right. They're going to submit an agreed order regarding your bond. All right. Thank you, Mr. Baker. All right. Thank you. What is your name, sir? Thor Beyer. Thor Beyer? Yes. Page 5960. Mr. Mr. Beyer, your case, uh, actually, you have one case with the, the 27 co defendants that's been moved to March. You're here on another case for arraignment. Right. As to the case for arraignment on the uh, I believe the one on arraignment is 2023-CR-276, which is a possession of methamphetamine with intent to sell or distribute. Are you representing on that as well? I am, Judge. Um, I'll wait for my reading, enter a plea of not guilty. Plea of not guilty is entered. This has a trial date of March the 1st, the same as the um, multi-defendant case, so we'll set this one as well for March the 1st. It shows the last plea date of January 12th, but we know that we're setting everything for status on February the 20th regarding these cases. Yes, Judge. And that, just so you know, that case is still pending in general session, so I'll be filing an order to, or a motion to remand. All right. So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Barrett, I'll come to the jail and talk to you about this, okay? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Are you order. Thank you. What's your name, please? Lorenzo Banks. On page 60. Mr. Banks, you are here today charged with uh, a one count indictment charging you, at least, with um, methamphetamine conspiracy to promote the sale or distribution of more than 300 grams of methamphetamines. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Judge, I believe he already has an attorney. If, right. I think this is the one that has Mark Odell, I, although I failed to bring my sheet of all the attorneys on the conspiracy right. case, Judge, but I believe- have you already had an, uh, Do you already have an attorney? Yes, sir, I have Mark Odell. Right. Mark Odell is your attorney. And all of these defendants that were involved in this multi-defendant case, have all of their cases are set for trial together on March the 1st. And we've set a new date of February the 20th of 2024 for the last day for you to enter a plea. <clears throat> Mr. Odell is going to be uh, reviewing all of the evidence in that interim period, and he'll be in touch with you to discuss your case. All right. Yes, thank sir. You. Um, can you tell me uh, my charges one more time? I only have one charge. 
Right now, the only thing I have before me is just the one count of uh, the multi, there's a, a 27 defendant case indictment that charges multiple defendants. You have one count in that according to this docket. Judge, he should be on all three counts. He is in all, okay. Yes, then you have you have multiple counts. So Mr. Odell will explain that to you. Okay, thank you, sir. Is that all? That's all we need. Thank you. Good morning. What's your name? Bateman. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Bateman, you're here to be arraigned on a charge. Of, uh, or are you actually, do you have a lawyer already? Yes, sir. Mr. Mr. Nathan Brown is your lawyer. Yes, sir. All right. Your case has actually been continued to March the 1st due to the complexity of the evidence and to allow your lawyer sufficient time to be able to review all of the evidence in this case. So your new trial date is March the 1st. There is a new status plea date of February the 20th. Mr. Brown was here yesterday. He will be in touch with you to discuss your case once he has all of the evidence. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good morning. What is your name? Randy Beasley Jr. Mr. Beasley is on page 61. Mr. Beasley, you're here today uh, represented by the public defender and, and to be arraigned on a superseding indictment as well as a new case, uh, 2023 CR 326, which charges you with possession of the intent to sell fentanyl and possession of cocaine. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Stevens, you uh, accept the appointment on the new case as well? I do, Your Honor. We will accept the appointment, waive for any formal reading of the indictment, and enter a plea of not guilty at this time, Your Honor. All right, plea of not guilty is entered. The, pre the, the pending case that I show was already, I think, under, with a superseding indictment, was set for trial November the 1st and uh, has a plea date of October the 31st. The new case has a trial date of November the 15th, and a plea date uh, soon would be the October 31st, nonetheless. It could be that or the November 14th. November 14th? Uh, yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Penner will be in touch with you, Mr. Beasley, and talk about your case. Thank you. Morning. What is your name, please? Clark. Randall Clark. Mr. Clark. Looking for you on our docket. Hold on, please. He's on page 12, Judge. All right, Mr. Clark, you're here to be arraigned on a charge of driving under the influence of an intoxicant. Um, you have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Yes. All right, public defender? Yeah. Except appointment, Your Honor. Public defender will be appointed. Trial date will be set for November the 3rd. The last day to enter a plea will be October 31st. I acknowledge receipt of the indictment, waive formal reading, and enter a plea of not guilty. That's all. all right, plea of not guilty, Senator. Mr. Clark, your lawyer is here. He's been given a copy of your charges. He'll be up to speak with you about uh, your case as quickly as he can. Thank you.
Uh, so what does that mean? Do I, I stay here in jail or what is going on with that or release or how does that work? The public mm-hmm. defender is going to come talk to you and, and see what they can do about helping you about resolving your case or getting it ready for trial. So right now you remain in jail until they do something about your case, but that hopefully will be within the next few days that they come talk to you, okay? Uh, what I mean, are you saying about talk to me? Are you saying I stay here until the trial date, or what are you speaking of in that matter? I'm going to tell you that you'll stay there until your lawyer comes and talks to you, and that's the best I can tell you. Once they've talked to you, then they'll let, they'll let us know whether or not they've got something worked out. Right now, I don't know what your bond situation is, but you are in jail because of this, unless there's some other charge. Uh, no, there's nothing else. All right. Then the, your lawyer is going to come talk to you and try to help you about getting this worked out, all right? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I was out of our bond, so I just wanted to I'd be doing the same thing or how that might work. Okay. Well, trust me when I tell you that I don't know anything about your case, so I can't give you any advice anyway. But I need you to let your lawyer help you do their job and help you with your case, okay? All right, uh, Mr. Clark, you'll step out. Your lawyer will come talk to you. All right. What is your name, please? Bowling. First name? Silas Bowling. Silas Bowling on page 62. You're here to be arraigned on a charge of probation violation, Mr. Bowling. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Please. All right. We're going to appoint the public defender to represent you. And they're here in the courtroom. We'll give them a copy of the affidavit against you. We accept the appointment. We acknowledge receipt of the violation and we enter a plea of not guilty at this time. Plea of not guilty is entered except for hearing. Do you want this? What's the basis for it? Looks like drug screens, Your Honor. I think we can set this one. You want to set it for the 26th, 7th, yes, brother? We're going to set you for next Wednesday, the 27th, for a hearing. Your lawyer will be up to speak with you about that and get you ready for that hearing, okay? Thank you, sir. Mr. Bowling, you are finished. Are you you're still Silas Bowling? Yes. Sir. With you. Thank you. Good morning. What's your name? Uh Tyner Bishop. The Bishop is on page 61. You are here to be arraigned on a charge of probation violation, Mr. Bishop. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Uh, yeah, I have a public defender. All right. We'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Apparently, you already represent him on something else, Mr. Sensing. Yes, Judge. All right. All right, we accept the appointment. Um, we This is what we need to set in November. He has some other charges that are pending. All right, November 28th. My right, public defenders here, they're going to represent you, and we've moved your case to November the 28th for them to work on trying to resolve your charges. Thank you. They'll be up to talk with you. Okay, thank you. You're free to go. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Morning. What is your name, please? 
Jesse Collins. Uh, Mr. Collins is on page 65. Your Honor, his attorney is Mr. McAvoy, and he was here yesterday as part of the conspiracy right. case. Uh, Mr. Collins, your uh, lawyer, Mr. McAvoy, was here yesterday when it was announced that all of the charges, all of the defendants who have the 27 defendant um, conspiracy case regarding the introduction and, and the sale of drugs into the 23rd Judicial District, all of those charges are now set for March the 1st for trial. And there's a plea date of February the 20th, and it's a status and plea date. And there was an agreement, I believe, as to his bond for $50,000. So Mr. Yes, McAvoy has uh, arranged for your bond to be set at $50,000. All right. Uh, it was at $50,000. Uh, he, he was supposed to have asked for a bond reduction, Mr. Wolf. Judge, I think it was at a hundred before. It was a hundred thousand dollars before, and he got it reduced to by fifty percent down to fifty thousand. So that was that was the agreement that was announced when your lawyer was here. I've been I've been checking since I've been here, and my bond was only fifty thousand. It was twenty five thousand for the uh, manufacturer sale delivery conspiracy, and twenty five thousand for the uh, money laundering. All right. Well, you need to contact Mr. McAvoy because the, what was announced yesterday and before me was that your bond was set at fifty thousand by agreement, from one hundred thousand dollars, which is the amount that was shown. So I, I don't know where the information is wrong, but talk to your lawyer, and he'll explain it to you, if, and, and he'll check to see if there's anything different. Okay. So my court date is uh, set for March the first, Your Honor. Yes, March the 1st is the trial date for all 27 defendants on that multi-defendant conspiracy to promote the sale of drugs case. So all of you are going to be tried on the 20, on the first day of March. Okay, first day of March. Thank you, Your Honor. Right. We need to check to see if the football field is available. I guess that's what <laughs> I was going to do when we had the 100 defendant case, but we were going to use the football field and if necessary, set up uh, big tents to uh, cover everything. So. Good morning. What is your name, please? Ted Davenport. Uh, Mr. Davenport is on page 65. <clears throat> Mr. Davenport, you're here to be arraigned on a charge of, did you have something, Mr. Howard? I'm sorry. I was just going to stand up here and take all of the VOP arraignments if, if they were going to keep coming. Don't go far. I'm sure we have some more. So. Mr. Davenport, uh, you have a charge of driving under the influence, fifth offense, open container, driving a revoked license, child abuse and neglect, and violation of the Financial Responsibility Act. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? I have Mr. John Stevens on another case. He is standing before me, and so, Mr. Stevens, will you accept this appointment? We will, Your Honor. On 23CR225 as well as 23CR229, we accept the appointment, waive any formal reading of the indictments for both of these matters, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, just for the record, um, on 23CR229, uh, there is a co-defendant in Erica Davenport, his wife. We have previously represented her before. At this time, though, I would ask that we see if we can accept the appointment. If she be appointed private counsel or retained counsel, we would ask that we can see if we can proceed forward before having to do a motion withdrawal. We will if need be, but at this time, we're willing to accept right. the appointment. Then we're going to go ahead and appoint you on both of Mr. Davenport's cases. And yes, sir. On the, um, I believe they're, uh, on the <clears throat> DUI case, that case is set for trial January 16th. Last day to enter a plea would be January 12th. On the aggravated assault, aggravated robbery, and simple assault, which is 229, those cases are set for March the 7th. Last day to enter a plea will now be on that 20th of February case date. And that will be your plea and status date. Thank you, Your Honor. Right, thank you. Mr. Davenport, Mr. Stevens will be up to talk with you as quickly as he can arrange it, all right? All right, thank you, sir. Judge, if, just if I could, before proceeding on this case, it looks as though we were appointed to Mr. Davenport yesterday. Do that one. 
we can give her a new attorney because I assume you've not been up to the jail to talk to Miss Davenport. She's, she's, out. Out. she's out. I didn't think you were quite that efficient. She's out of custody. She's out of custody. All right, then we'll we'll need to appoint someone else for Mrs. Davenport. So. Yes, sir. Good morning. What is your name, sir? Judah Davis. All right, Mr. Davis is on page 66 and 67. Mr. Davis, you're here on uh, 2023 two, CR 277 on a charge of public intoxication. And you also have a charge of 2023 CR 278, which charges you with possess, simple possession of methamphetamine and drug paraphernalia. 279, you're charged with false imprisonment, disorderly conduct, and public intoxication. To all of these charges, you have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Uh, am I able to just speak to a DA? You want to speak to the district attorney? Yeah. All right. You understand that the district attorney represents the state of Tennessee and not you? Yes, sir. And that they will, their intention is to prosecute you on these cases and potentially put you behind bars for years. And therefore, their interest in talking to you will be to tell you what they will offer you to resolve your case, but they're not going to protect your interest. They're not going to give you legal advice. That would be the job of the lawyer. Do you want a lawyer who's looking out solely after your interest? I just want to get this, this settled as quick as possible. Okay. Then let me appoint an attorney to represent you who can give you the advice of what needs to be done to best, uh, to best protect your interest and they will act to try to resolve these cases as quickly as possible within the realm of the law. Is that uh, okay with you? Yes, sir. All right, I think that's wise on your part. Mr. Davis will be appointed the public defender and if you get something worked, if you talk to him and get him worked out, we can take him up next uh, week. But Mr. Davis, I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender and they will be up to talk with you about your cases. Do you wish a formal reading of all of these charges? Your Honor, on behalf of the defender, we would not we would waive that, Your Honor. Fine. Formal arraignment, the full reading of the charges is uh, waived. There's a plea of not guilty is entered. <clears throat> All of these cases are set for January the 9th of 2024. The last day to enter a plea would be January the 8th. Mr. Davis, they're going to talk with you about your case. If they get you more get something worked out pursuant to your desires, then they can we can try to take you up next week one day, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. So, but so my court date set for January. That for January to go to trial. If you get it resolved, you know, by an agreement like you were talking about, then we can potentially get you out sooner. Okay. Okay. Mr. Right. Davis, with the public defender's office. We'll have someone come see you soon, sir. In the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. What is your name, please? Davis. I'm sorry. Davis Tasman. Tasman Davis. Age 68. All right. You are Tasman Rashawn Davis? Yes. Okay. You're going to be arraigned on the charge of assault on a first responder and resisting arrest. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer? Uh, no. Don't want a lawyer? No. Okay. You're going to represent yourself on these charges? No. Yeah. The owner of the the owner of the spot is my family member. They didn't call the police. All right. Listen as I read this to you. In the circuit court for Dixon County, Tennessee at Charlotte, September term grand jury 2023, the grand jurors of Dixon County duly impaneled and sworn upon their oaths do present that on or about May 25th, 2023 in Dixon County, Tennessee, and prior to the finding of this indictment, Tesman Davis did then and there did unlawfully and knowingly cause physical contact with a first responder and a reasonable person would regard the contact as extremely offensive or provocative, including but not limited to spitting, throwing, or otherwise transferring bodily fluids, bodily pathogens, or human waste onto the person of a first responder who is discharging or attempting to discharge 
their duties in violation of Tennessee Code Annotated 3913-116, a Class A misdemeanor, and against the peace and dignity of the state of Tennessee. Count two, and the grand jurors aforesaid upon their oaths aforesaid, do further present and say that on or about May 25th, 2003, and prior to the finding of this indictment in the county and state aforesaid, Tasman Davis then and there did unlawfully and intentionally prevent or obstruct a law enforcement officer to wit Mason, Officer Mason Albright. When the said Tasman Davis knew that said Officer Mason Albright was a law enforcement officer from effecting a stop, frisk, halt, arrest, or search of the said Tasman Davis by using force against the law enforcement officer in violation of TCA 3916-602, a Class B misdemeanor, all of which is against the peace and dignity of the state of Tennessee, signed W. Ray Crouch, Jr., District Attorney General. Show that this defendant has been arraigned and a plea of not guilty will be entered for him. I'm going to have this uh, copy of your indictment transferred to the jail since you're representing yourself. And yeah. your trial date is January the 11th of 2024. Your last day to enter a plea, if you want to work something out with the state, will be January the 8th of 2024. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You're free to go. Okay. I got a question. What if I wanted to plead guilty? If you wanted to plead guilty, then you can do that. Uh, we can get, bring you down and let you uh, enter a plea of guilty after the state tells you what the recommendation is. Mr. Davis, I'm Tyler Howard with the Public Defender's Office, and according to our records, I represent you on some other matters. So if, if you just hold off a little bit, let me come talk to you at the jail about all of your cases, and maybe we can get something worked out for everything, okay? Yeah, but uh, I wanna, I'm going I'm to plead guilty. Sounds like he wants to plead guilty, Mr. Howard. What I'd like to do is to let him come down this afternoon. Let's bring him down this afternoon after lunch let you talk to him and then I'll appoint your office to represent him now so that you can try to get this resolved for yes, sir. We're gonna bring you down after lunch and let Mr. Howard, who's a very good lawyer, uh, come down him, let him talk to you about what he can get worked out for you, okay? All right, Judge, but it's cool if I plead guilty? It's cool with me. I don't know if it's cool with your lawyer or not, but I think right. it's cool with me and it's cool with the state. So Mr. Right. Howard, I'll let you know whether it's cool, okay? All right, but right. see you after lunch. All right. I've got to write a book someday. I don't know if I'm going to ever have time to do it. But I... Good morning. What is your name, please? Roy Draven. Roy Driver on page 73. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Driver, you are charged here uh, and need to be arraigned on a charge of violation of community corrections. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Yes, sir. All right. Public defender is going to be appointed to represent you. Mr. Howard is here. We'll be giving him a copy of your affidavit. Do you wish a formal reading of that? We, we accept the appointment. We waive formal reading, Your Honor. At this time, I think this is one we could set in November. Or no, September. Well, let's leave it set for September at this point. All right. September the 27th will be your hearing date. That's next Wednesday. So the public defender is appointed for you, Mr. Driver. They're going to come talk to you and get you ready for a hearing on September the 27th. Thank you. Can I ask what is his name? Pardon? Can I ask what's my lawyer's name? Your lawyer's name, is it going to be you, it, Mr. It'll Howard? be Mr. Sensing We Mr. have Stevens. Mr. Sensing, Mr. Howard, and Mr. Stevens, who are all public defender, uh, assistant public defenders. They're all very good lawyers with experience, and one of them is going to be your lawyer. Um, I have a whole team, Judge. They have, they have, you'll have a whole team of lawyers representing you. So uh, if one of them falls by the wayside, the other one will step right in. But I can't tell you their name because they have to go through an assignment process. But you'll have a lawyer that will be up to speak to you in the next few days. But it will be a public defender, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thank you.
Good morning. Can you tell me, please? What is your name? Joseph Aiken. This is my case, Your Honor. Page 58. Mr. Aiken had failed to appear. This case was previously set. We just need to pick a new trial date, Your Honor. My case, um, January 17th is my Thank you. January 17th. Yes, well, Mr. Aiken's new trial date would be January 17th of 2024. That would make the 12th is the last day to enter a plea, I believe. Mr. Aiken, your lawyer's here and been, we've given them, you a new trial date, so we'll see. It'll be a different judge, but they'll take care of you on the 12th. I'm sorry, on the 17th of January. Thank you. That's all we need. All right. Good morning. What is your name, please? Uh, John Almondares. Right, Mr. Almendarez, you are here today to be arraigned. I believe actually Mike Patrick is your lawyer. And yes, sir. Your case is one of the 27 defendant uh, conspiracy to promote the sale of drugs cases, and it has uh, been reset for March the 1st of 2024. And to allow for discovery to take place, there's a, a massive amount of discovery, electronic information that your lawyer is going to have to look at. So it's been reset for March the 1st. They're going to have a plea date and status date of February the 20th. But Mr. Patrick will be in touch with you to talk about your case once he's gotten the discovery so he can discuss it with you, OK? Thank you. Yes. Yep. Good morning. What is your name, please? Errol Arrington. Mr. Arrington's on page 59. And you represent him, Mr. Wainick? I think that he's going to be entering a plea pursuant to uh, 4035-313. All right, Mr. Arrington, your lawyer is here, and I've been handed a document indicating that uh, you have worked, he has worked out on your behalf an agreement to allow you to enter a plea of no contest to count one criminal simulation pursuant to uh, our judicial diversion statute and you would be placed on probation for one year <clears throat> and you would be ordered to pay restitution to uh, f and bank of one thousand eight hundred forty five dollars joint and severally with your co-defendant kristen goad uh, payable at 175 dollars a month until paid you to have no contact with FMM Bank and pay the court costs. Count two of that indictment would be dismissed. Wait, Raise your yes, right sir. hand and place you under oath. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this case would be the truth and nothing but the truth. Say, hope you got it. Hope to God. Thank you. You can put your hand down, please. 
Uh, state your full name for the record. Errol Dillon Arrington. Mr. Arrington, I'm going to go over these rights with you that I'm required to and make sure that you are aware of your rights. So when I uh, make a statement and ask you if you understand it, you need to answer verbally on the record because we're recording this, okay? Yes, Your Honor. All right. First of all, do you <clears throat> understand what you're charged with and have you seen or been shown a copy of the indictment and uh, discuss with Mr. Wainick the range of punishment you're facing as well as possible defenses you might have to the state's evidence? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand you have a right to plead uh, no contest, but you also have a right to plead not guilty and have a speedy and public trial by jury? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that a no contest plea means that you understand what that state's evidence would be? You're not going to admit anything, but you're not going to deny it. And then in a few minutes, the state's going to tell me what their evidence would be if this case went to trial. Yes, Your Honor. You understand if you went to trial, you would have the right to have a lawyer and to have one appointed for you? Yes, Your Honor. You understand if you went to trial, you would be presumed to be innocent until such time, if ever, the state proved your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt to the satisfaction of all 12 jurors, and their verdict would have to be unanimous before you could be convicted. Yes, Your Honor. You understand if you went to trial, you and your lawyer could confront and cross-examine every witness the state called, plus you could bring in your own witnesses by the use of a subpoena. Yes, Your Honor. You understand that if you went to trial, you would be presumed to be innocent. You would not have to testify anything, and there would be no inference of guilt arising because you did not testify at your own trial. Yes, Your Honor. You understand that if you went to trial and you were found guilty, you could appeal the conviction and the sentence imposed to the Court of Criminal Appeals and have a lawyer appointed to help you with that appeal. Yes, Your Honor. You understand that by pleading no contest or no low contendere, you are waiving your right to a trial and to an appeal. All I'm going to do is approve what your lawyer has worked out. Yes, Your Honor. You understand what I've explained to you. You're entering this under a, a statute that allows you to be on probation for a year. And at the end of that year, if you've done everything you're supposed to do, paid your restitution, stayed out of trouble, you can apply to have your record expunged or wiped clean and it will be removed from your record. It'll be as though this never occurred. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Do you also understand that if you violate your probation, then not only will you come back before me or one of the other judges and this become a permanent conviction on your record and be there to, in the future to make more severe the punishment you receive if you're ever again convicted of a crime, but you could also be sentenced to a longer period of time within the range by resentencing you if that was an option. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All depends on how you do on probation. You recognize that fact. Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand everything I've explained to you thus far? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Do you want to plead no contest to this charge and give up your right to a trial and to an appeal? Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> Is your decision to plead no contest today voluntary? Yes, Your Honor. Anybody forcing you to do this? No, Your Honor. You understand I can't accept your plea unless I'm satisfied there are facts to support it and that you are, in fact, guilty. Yes, Your Honor. And I want you to listen as the state's evidence was, uh, as the state, state tells me what their evidence would be if this case went. General? Your Honor, I'm standing in for General Bryson. 2022 20, CR 349. If this matter had proceeded to trial, the state would have had witnesses who would testify under oath that on May the 23rd of 2022, um, this defendant and the co defendant passed or deposited, passed and deposited um, an altered and fictitious uh, check into Mr. Uh, Arrington's account at the First Farmers uh, Merchants Bank in White Bluff. Um, the check was made out to uh, Krista Good, who turned out to be the co-defendant, um, and that all happened here in Dixon County. I'm not asking that you agree with those facts, but do you understand that's what the state's evidence would be if this case went to trial? Yes, Your Honor. You still wish to enter a plea of no contest? Yes, Your Honor. Are you satisfied with your attorney services? Yes, Your Honor. I feel like Mr. Uh, Wainick has done a good job of representing you competently. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wainick, do you know of any reason you should not enter this plea? I do not, Judge. Then <clears throat> Errol D. Arrington in docket number 2022 CR 349, upon your plea of no contest to count one uh, criminal simulation, count two is dismissed as a part of the agreement. 
I ordered that you be placed on probation for a period of one year with the Department of Corrections. Um, it will be supervised probation. You're ordered to pay restitution of $1,845 to FNM Bank jointly and severally with your co defendant, Krista Goad. It will be payable as uh, $175 a month until paid in full. You're to have no contact with FNM Bank and pay the court costs. This is entered pursuant to Judicial Diverse and Statute of Tennessee Code Annotated 4035313. Thank you. You uh, need to see the probation department as soon as you're released from jail, okay? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Arrington, if you have any questions, as soon as you get out, you call me, okay? Yes, thank you, Mr. Wayne. Thank you. That's all we need, boy. Morning, what is your name? Wallace Brazel. Wallace Brazel on page 62. <clears throat> Mr. Brazel, you're here to be arraigned on a charge of violation of probation. You have the right to an attorney to represent you. Do you wish to have a lawyer? Uh, yes, sir. I, I have one. And that lawyer, is that a public defender that you have? No, sir. Who do you have as a lawyer? Uh, Mike Flanagan. Mike Flanagan is your lawyer. You've actually hired him? Yes, sir. All right, we'll show Mr. Flanagan as your attorney. And Mr. Brazel, we're going to move you to September the 26th to let Mr. Um, Flanagan, he's involved in a murder case today. We're going to move you to September the 26th to let us find out what he wants to do with your case. All right. Okay. Morning. What is your name, please? Daryl Bryant. Daryl Bryant is on page 63. Bryant, you're here to be arraigned on a charge of violation of probation. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Yes, sir. All right. Public defender will be appointed. We accept the appointment, Your Honor. Uh, Waive formal reading and at this time reserve entry of a plea. Could we set him on the 27th, please? All right, September the 27th for hearing. Public defender is appointed. The plea of not guilty is entered. See you next week. Thank you. Good morning. What is your name, please? Tyler Chambers. Page 64. Chambers, you're here to be arraigned on an indictment charging you with especially aggravated kidnapping, especially aggravated burglary, aggravated assault, and domestic assault. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Uh, uh, no, sir. That's fine. All right. These are very serious charges that can land you in prison for many, many years. And I want to make sure you understand that. Do you understand that you're looking at serious prison time on these charges if you're found guilty? Yes, so, sir. Don't you want to have a lawyer represent you that might give you advice and help you decide what's in your best interest? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Then I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Accept the appointment, Your Honor. Acknowledge receipt of the indictment, waive formal reading, and enter a plea of not guilty. A plea of not guilty is entered. Trial date will be set for November the 15th. Uh, trial, the last day to enter a plea will be November 13th. Public defender is going to come up and talk with you about your case and help you get ready for either a trial or a disposition, okay? Yes, sir. Can Thank I you. ask Can I ask, ask a question? Certainly, uh, and, and let me just say this. And you don't need to discuss any aspect of your case, but if you want to ask a question, your lawyer standing here at the podium, and we'll see whether or not we've got anything going on. Yes, sir. Uh, I was just trying to ask, do I have a bond for these charges or anything? Um, I'm not sure what the, I'm sure you have a bond amount, but I, I don't think you've made a bond. What, Mr. Howard? Mr. Sensing's alerting me that we represent the victim. In this All matter. Right. Public Defender's Office can't represent you because they represent the victim in this case. 
So I'm going to appoint instead <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Lee Spratt to represent you, who's a local attorney. Mr. Lee Spratt will be appointed to represent him. We'll notify Mr. Spratt of the fact that he's been appointed and he'll be up to talk with you about your case. Yes, yes sir. Oh, because Hold on just a second. Yes, sir. Because this is set in November. Yes, he has to be next week. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to appoint someone else simply because Mr. Spratt is... Uh, Mr. Spratt has a attempted first degree murder case set uh, later this month, and I and your case is set in November. I don't want to overload him and give him too much to do, so we will instead. I'll appoint Mr. Olin Baker, who's his junior law partner. All right, we'll appoint Mr. Olin Baker to represent you. He's an older lawyer who can come up and talk with you as quickly as they can let, get him in. We'll go from there. Mr. Baker, I'm, I don't know what your bond is, but Mr. Baker is going to find that out and he'll talk with you about your bond. Do you know offhand what his bond amount is, Leslie? Um, what? Uh, what is it? Uh, he was home without bond. Here's the older attorney. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Baker, you've just been appointed to represent Mr. Uh, Tyler Chambers, who is here on an especially aggravated kidnapping, especially aggravated burglary, aggravated assault, and domestic assault. And <clears throat> we're appointing you to represent him. He's set for trial in November in front of Judge Wallace. He's asking what his bond is. They're saying it's a hold for a hearing, a uh, hold without bond. I don't know what the basis of that is. But Mr. Baker is here and uh, he's going to check into it and then we'll see about if he needs to file something regarding a bond and we can uh, let him file it and we'll have it heard next week. Yes, sir. So I guess it would be negligent of me not to ask for bond today since this is not a capital case, Judge. Is it, what does it say? On? I feel like this might have been a case where Ms. Allen no so. did a motion to revoke his bond, but I can't, I don't recall. Sounds like it must have been. All right. Well, let's let Mr. Baker look into it, and Mr. Baker will take the steps. He's a very good attorney, very experienced. He will take the steps necessary to try to find out what's going on with your bond, and if necessary, we'll have a bond hearing. Thanks, right. Judge. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chambers. Let's take a recess for about 15 minutes. All rise.
Does so this, Mr. Chambers? We have an open case with the uh, victim in this case. Uh, here in Bethke, we have an, on, an open case in juvenile court with her. I don't know that we could take this case for Mr. Chambers. I would say that would probably we err on the side of caution and say no, you shouldn't take that case. Yeah. Well, tell you what, let's do. Mr. Flanagan is making my life more difficult. We will appoint Mr. Michael Flanagan to represent Mr. Chambers. I'll email him. Notify him. Mr. You need to notify Mike Flanagan that he's been appointed to represent Mr. Tyler Chambers. <clears throat> and I'll email him a copy of this indictment. All right. And Judge, at your leisure, Ms. Lauren Cool has arrived. Seriously? Seriously. All right. What page is she on? 17, I think. If you'll, um, I'm going to take up a matter here in the courtroom. If you'll give me just a second, we'll come back to you, okay? All right. Okay. Thank you. Oh, we're going to take us up. Lauren Grace Cool on page 15. Judge, may I approach? May. Judge, in this case, Ms. Cool's charged in two case numbers 2023 CR 56 and 57. We've entered a we have an agreement with the state to settle this case. In the CR 56 case, Ms. Cool did enter a plea to an amended count of attempted evading arrest in an auto. That's an E felony, receive a sentence of two years, suspended to probation, credit for time served, pay the court cost. And count one, three, and four in that indictment would be dismissed. She received pretrial jail credits from February 2nd to 5 5 23. And in 2023, CR 57, she would like to enter a no contest plea to one count of misdemeanor shoplifting, receive a concurrent sentence of 11 29, suspended to probation, pay $60 restitution to the shoe company here in Dixon, pay the court cost. We would also, these are no contest pleas. We would stipulate the state would enter a would, could present evidence that on February 2 of this year, uh, Ms. Warren was cool was driving a car where she was uh, being followed by the police department. They activated their lights and Ms. Cool went several, several miles before she decided to be stopped. We would also stipulate the state would introduce evidence that on December 26th of last year, Ms. Cool was caught on a camera at the shoe company in Dixon, reportedly <coughs> stuffing a set of Nikes into her jacket. And that would be the state's proof in this case, Judge. <clears throat> All right. Ms. Uh, cool, raise your right hand. Let's place you on the road. Please tell them who has to play or on the test game. Please tell them who has to play. Please tell them who has to play. Yes. State your full name for the record. Lauren Grace Cool. Ms. Cool, you are here today on two different indictments. You've heard your lawyer go over what the agreement is, but have you seen or been shown a copy of those charges and talked them over with Mr. Baker, discussed with him the uh, range of punishments you're facing as well as any possible defenses you might have to the evidence? Yes, sir. Well, it's indicated you want to enter a plea of no contest or no law contendere. What that means is, is you understand what the state's evidence will be. You're not going to admit you to anything, but you're not going to deny it. And as a result, the state's going to tell me or Mr. Baker has already stipulated that the uh, evidence is going to be sufficient for a finding of guilt in these cases. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. You also understand you have a right to plead not guilty and to have a speedy and public trial by jury. Yes, sir. You understand if you went to a trial, you would have the right to have a lawyer and to have one appointed for you if necessary. Yes, sir. You understand that if you went to trial, you would be pre uh, presumed to be innocent until such time, if ever, the state proved your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt to the satisfaction of all 12 jurors and their verdict would have to be unanimous before you could be convicted. Do you understand that if you went to trial, you and your lawyer could confront and cross-examine all witnesses the state might call to testify against you and you can bring in your own witnesses by the use of a subpoena? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Do you understand that if you went to trial, you would be presumed to be innocent, you would not have to testify or prove anything and there would be no inference of guilt that would arise because you did not testify at your own trial? Yes, sir. 
If you understand if you went to trial and you were found guilty, you could appeal the conviction and the sentence imposed to the Court of Criminal Appeals and have a lawyer appointed to help you with that appeal. Yes, sir. You understand that if you went to trial and you were found, I'm sorry, that by entering this plea of no contest, you were giving up your right to a trial and to an appeal. All I'm going to do is approve what your lawyer has worked out. Yes, sir. But do you understand that those are going to be two convictions that are going to result from this? And they will be on your record in the future to make more severe the punishment you'll receive if you're ever again convicted of a crime. Yes, sir. You understand everything I've explained to you? Yes, sir. Do you want to plead no contest to these charges according to this agreement and give up your right to a trial? Yes, sir. Is your decision to plead no contest today voluntary? Yes, sir. Anybody forcing you to do this? Yes, sir. You understand I can't accept your plea unless I'm satisfied there are facts to support it and that you are in fact guilty. I want you to listen as the state tells me what, well, actually, we've gone over this again. I have a routine. I've memorized this stuff for years. So when Mr. Baker throws a wrench in my, in my memory routine, I have to kind of pause and stop. You have stipulated as to the facts through your lawyer that there are sufficient facts to find you guilty of these offenses. Is that correct? Sir. Right. <clears throat> are you satisfied with your attorney's services? Yes, sir. You feel like Mr. Baker has done a good job of representing you confidently? Yes, sir. Mr. Baker, do you know of any reason she should not enter these pleas? I do not, Judge. Is there anything further from the state? No, Your Honor. Then, <clears throat> Lauren Grace Cool and docket number 2023-CR56, upon your plea to no contest to the count two, the amended charge of attempted evading, uh, I find you guilty, sentence you to two years, Tennessee Department of Corrections. We're giving you credit for time served. That will be suspended to probation. You're ordered to pay court costs. Counts one, three, and four are dismissed. And docket number 57, you're found guilty of shoplifting, uh, sentenced to 11 months and 29 days in the county jail to be served concurrently, and that will be suspended to probation concurrent with your prior case and uh, ordered to pay $60 restitution to the shoe company. I assume she is barred from having contact with the shoe company. So if not, that will be a condition. All right, that's the judgment of the court. She'll need to see the probation department. So. Anything else, Mr. Baker? That's all I had, Judge. All, right, all, all that's ready anyway. All right, we're ready to go back to the jail if the jail is ready for us. All right, good morning. We'll need to unmute your device there, please. Can you reach up there and there should be a little. I got it. We're good. What's your name, please? Timothy Dollar. Mr. Dollar is on page 69. All right, Mr. Dollar, you're here to be arraigned on a charge of probation violation. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Yes, sir. All right, public defender will be appointed. We accept the appointment. We waive formal reading of the petition and we ask that it be set this month on the 27th. September 27th. We set you for next Wednesday and your lawyer is here and they're being given a couple of charges and they'll be ready for a hearing next week, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning. What's your name, please? Michael Dodson. Mr. Dodson's on page 69 through 72. Mr. Dodson, you're here to be arraigned on the charge of probation violation. <clears throat> you have the yes. right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Uh, yes, sir. Public defender will be appointed. We accept the appointment, Your Honor. We waive formal reading and request that this be set out into November. All right, November the 28th for hearing. Public defenders appointed to be up to talk with you about getting you ready for your hearing on November 28th. Yes, sir. Hey. That's it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good morning. What's your name, please? Edmondson. 
Jacob Edmondson. Yes, sir. Page 75. Here to be uh, actually you're represented by the public defender and set for trial on Friday. This is going to be nollied on the motion of the state. Your Honor, I'm standing in for General Allen. She has not been able to locate the victim after numerous attempts, so she's going to enter a nolly. Mr. Emerson, your cases against you are being dismissed by the state because they have not been able to locate the victim in your case, and therefore they have no way to proceed. So the charges against you are dismissed. All right. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good morning. What's your name, please? Brandon Emmons. On page 75, Mr. Emmons, you're here to be arraigned on the charge of probation violation. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Public defender? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Knowledge receipt of the indictment or the violation, and we request this be set this month on the 27th, please. All right. Public defender is appointed. Plea of not guilty is entered, set for hearing on November, I'm sorry, September the 27th. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning. What is your name, please? Uh, Zachary Fulton. All right. Zachary Fulton on page 77. Mr. Fulton, you're here to be arraigned on the charge of probation violation. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Uh, yes, already sir. Right. I'm, I'm sorry. actually here on behalf of Mr. Fulton. I addressed the court yesterday about appearing via Zoom on behalf of Mr. Fulton. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. I forgot I told you about that doing that. So, all right. Um, you have, uh, he's being arraigned on a probation violation. So we'll enter a plea of not guilty. And Norm, do you want this set for September the 27th or November the 28th? Well, Your Honor, we actually had an agreement in that case. So if Your Honor would allow us to enter that today, that would take away the necessity to set it another day. I mean, that's fine with me. You uh, have an agreement. Who did you yes. talk to? With General Bryson, and I believe she's not in the courtroom right now. I've tried texting her. All right. And what is your agreement? The agreement would be Mr. Fulton would be entering a plea of guilty to this probation violation. He'd be revoked and reinstated, but he would be in, reinstated to a new term of three years of community corrections. All right. General, Bry uh, General Allen is not here in the courtroom today, but anybody have any Anything contrary about Judge, that? I knew that they—it's General Bryson, oh. and I knew they were speaking about that yesterday. So we oh, it's General Bryson. That yes, I'm sorry, I apologize. All right, <clears throat> then we'll go forward with that, so you can dispose of your case today. Mr. Fulton, raise your right hand. Let's place you under oath. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this case to be the truth and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. All right, <clears throat> thank you. You can put your hand down now. State your full name for the record. Zachary Fulton. Mr. Fulton, you are here today charged with a probation violation. You've heard your lawyer indicate that he wants to go ahead and, or that you want to go ahead and, and resolve this case by this agreement. Uh, but I want to make sure you understand that you have the right to plead not guilty to this charge and to have a hearing where the state would be required to prove to the legal standard that you had violated your probation. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. You also understand that you would have the right to have a lawyer and to have one appointed for you if necessary. Yes, sir. You understand that if you went to trial, or had that hearing rather, <clears throat> and I found you guilty, you could appeal whatever I did in your case to the Court of Criminal Appeals and have a lawyer appointed to help you with that appeal. Yes, sir. You understand that by pleading guilty, you're giving up your right to that hearing and that appeal. And what I'm all I'm gonna do is approve what your lawyer and the state have worked out. And do you understand that that means that you're being revoked to serve your sentence, but then reinstated on time served, but you're going to have a new sentence of three years community corrections that will be imposed. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. That's your desire to do that? Yes, sir. Right. You understand everything I've explained to you? I do. You want to plead guilty to your charge of violation of probation? Yes, sir. And upon your plea of guilty, I find you guilty, order that you be revoked to serve your sentence, but by agreement with the state on time served, you will be uh, returned to probation, transferred to community corrections, where you will begin a three-year sentence with community corrections. All right. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you.
Mr. Fulton, upon your release, you're going to need to report immediately to the community corrections officer. Um, All right. in the courtroom, but you'll, it's up to you. And if you don't, violate and you'll go to jail. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. What is your name, please? Zachary Feltz. Mr. Feltz is on page 76. Feltz, you are here today to be arraigned on a charge of domestic assault. <clears throat> you have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Yes, sir. All right. Public defender. Accept the appointment, Your Honor. We waive formal reading, reserve entry of a plea, and plea of not guilty is entered, set for trial March the 6th of 2024. The last day to enter a plea will be now the February 20th of 2024 status and plea date. All right. Your lawyer will be in touch with you to get you ready for trial. Obviously, well, can I just plead guilty to it if it's going to be March 6th? Because that'll, that'll do away with my 1129 right there. I'll be done before then with the 1129. Mr. Howard, would you like to have him brought down it, after lunch? If you bring him down this afternoon, we can probably resolve it. We're going to have you well. brought down after lunch, Mr. Feltz, so you can yeah. talk with your lawyer. And, and if y'all can get it resolved, I'll take your plea this afternoon. All right. Thank you. Well, the district attorney who prosecutes your case is not available today to negotiate a district. We're going to put you on next week's docket on the 27th. And I, that, that'll let you get it resolved whether it's between your lawyer and the state. Plus, it'll give your lawyer time to talk with you and find out what needs to be, uh, what he needs to know about your case. Okay. Uh, you said next week. September the 27th, next Wednesday. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Your Honor, if I'm, I may, while we're on that page at the bottom of that, there's a matter of Cody Allen Francis. Jail. It's my understanding he wasn't transported. We're really just trying to get him to Dixon County at this point, Your Honor. Your Honor, I can verify I did speak with the sergeant on duty yesterday morning. Um, he stated Cody Francis is there. He had been transferred to Metro Nashville, and we were not notified, and then he got released from there. I'm assuming back to Eastman County, but he is currently in Eastman County custody. I didn't have a transport order for him, so I did not pick him up. We do have an active warrant for him. I believe it's a violation of probation, but I'm not, not sure about that. Do you need the transport order for him to try to, can we get him here next week if we sign a transport order today? I know that's less than 10 days. Yeah, that would have to be approved by my captain. Who's your captain? All right. Well, I don't know that it would be an issue because I do live close to that jail. So I should be able to check with him and see if we can get him here. We'll, I'll sign a transport order to try to get him here next week if we can get him. To... Oh, never mind. Okay. Never mind. All right. We'll put him on the November, put Mr. Uh, Cody Lee Francis on November the 28th. 28th, yes, sir. All right. Thank you. All right, I'm sorry, there at the jail, what's your name, please? Charles Haller. Mr. Haller's on page 80. <clears throat> Mr. Haller, you are here today. I believe Mr. Potter represents you and he has asked that your case be reset for September the 27th after he arraigned you yesterday uh, by standing before the court and entering a plea of not guilty. He asked that we go ahead and set your case for next Wednesday, the 27th. And Mr. Potter is going to be here next Wednesday and hopefully resolve your case next week. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning. What's your name, please? Nicholas Hanlon, H-A-N-L-O-N. Mr. Hanlon is on page 81. Mr. Hanlon, you are here today to be arraigned on a charge of uh, possession of fentanyl, point, or less than five grams or greater. <clears throat> um, 
You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Yes, sir. Public defender. Accept the appointment. Or, uh, acknowledge receipt of the yes, indictment. Sir. Waive formal reading. Plea of not guilty. At this Plea of not guilty is entered. Trial date will be set for March 19th of 2024. The last day of the plea will be March 20th. We'll have a status date of February the 20th of 2024. You've been appointed a public defender, Mr. Hanlon. They're going to come talk with you about getting your case ready for uh, trial or to try to resolve it by some agreement, if possible. Okay, it could be it could be resolved prior to that date. It could be resolved prior to that date if you all reach an agreement, but that's your trial date is in March. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good morning. What's your name, please? Sean Harding. Harding is on page 81 and 82. Mr. Harding, you are here today uh, represented by Sean Sergo. Is this one of the... Uh... Judge, Mr. Harding is part of the conspiracy case. He also has other cases, some of which come out of the conspiracy case, and I think one's maybe a domestic as well. But if we want to put them all on March 1st, I think that might... Uh, Mr. Harding... You are a part of sell or introduce drugs into the 23rd Judicial District. It's uh, got 27 different defendants. We have set that trial date for March the 1st. And Mr. Sergo has been advised of that fact. So your new trial date is going to be March the 1st. And all of your cases are being set that day. I'm here. This will be the uh, drug conspiracy case. And the last day to enter a plea will be now February the 20th of 2024. That'll be in a last day to enter a plea and a status. So, Mr. Harding, your lawyer will be in touch with you and get you ready for that hearing and try to resolve all of your cases if possible. I appreciate that. Thank you. Good morning. Thought we were making progress till I turn the next page. <clears throat> Good morning. What is your name, please? John Hargrove. Mr. Hargrove's on page 83. Mr. Hargrove, you're here today to, uh, I believe you are represented by Mark Atchison. And Mr. Atchison advised us that your case has been set for the 27th um, of next week. He thinks he may be able to resolve your charges and wanted to have it set for the 27th. Uh, rather than your trial on the Friday. Do you understand he's going to try to work out your case and have it taken care of next Wednesday, okay? Sounds good to me. Yes, sir, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Harmon. How are you? All right. How are you? All right. Mr. Flanagan represents you. And your trial date was the 21st, but Mr. Flanagan is trying a murder case today and none of his trials this week are going to be able to go. So we've at, he's asked us to put you on Tuesday of next week for us to be able to either case or set you a new trial date. So we will see you next Tuesday and see what he can do, okay? All righty. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a good day. <laughs> Are you Christopher Health? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Health, you are here today to be arraigned on a charge of aggravated sexual battery and rape of a child. Do you have the right to an attorney? Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Yes, sir. You do. Have you had a lawyer previously? I've spoken to Jake Lockhart over the matter, but he never said whether he was he was going to look into it. All right. Well, let's go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you here. Mr. Lockhart's no longer our public defender. He's in private practice. And if you retain Mr. Lockhart, then you certainly can have him replace your uh, public defender. Public defender will be appointed. We accept the appointment. We acknowledge receipt of the indictment. Waive formal reading of the same. Enter plea of not guilty. The plea of not guilty is entered. Set for trial March 19th of 2024. Last day to enter a plea will be March the 12th. There will be a status and uh, status hearing on February the 20th of 2024. All right, public defender will be talking to you. If you retain Mr. Lockhart, then you need to go ahead and do that as quickly as possible so you can get your case ready for trial, okay? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Thank you. Good 
Good morning. Are you Dakota Hollers? Yes. Dakota Hollers, you're here today to be arraigned. Uh, actually, let me take a check. Trial Friday, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Fl Mr. Flanagan's case, and he is set for trial on Friday, but Mr. Flanagan is involved in a murder trial. We are moving your case to next Tuesday for Mr. Flanagan to advise us whether he's got something resolved or we're going to have to set you a new trial date. Okay. I'm going to case it uh, this week. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Your Honor. Your Honor. Yes. Mr. John Hunt bonded out last night on second ship. John Hunt. I'm sorry. What? He bonded last night. Mr. Hunt made bond. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We took care of Good morning. Are you Isaiah James? Yes, sir. Right. James, you are here today to be arraigned on a charge of probation violation. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer? Yes. All right. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Okay. Give them a copy of your charge. Plea of not guilty is entered. Do you want this heard on? Get set in November. There. Excuse me. I'm sorry. November the 28th will be the hearing date due to new charges pending, and a public defender is appointed to represent you. Mr. James, they'll be up to speak with you about your case and try to see what they can resolve. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sergeant Simmons, I need court full, please. <laughs> Your Honor, they're doing chow. Do you want to take a lunch break or you want to wait? Is, are y'all having your lunch break now? Is that yes? They're serving chow. All right, starting chow. Then I don't want to interrupt those guys from eating their chow, so we'll take our lunch recess at the same time. So, all right. Thank, thank you. you. What time are you coming back? Uh, let's make it one o'clock. Okay. All right. Thank you. Oh, it's chow time. Everybody go eat. <laughs> We'll stand in recess at one o'clock. All right.
The ones that got uh, passed over to us, we haven't even touched yet. We got some citations done. We got a lot, of, uh, a bunch of people released. But uh, I mean, honestly, it's pretty much been cool. Here's three uh, Europa show. We got um, line number, uh, Dr. Murphy, we'll start coming. And when I have one in here, my next one will be right here ready for you. Okay. We have one order since we gave it to Ronnie. Ronnie, you're going to be first of the group. And Owen, and Reed, and Dr. Murphy. I need Delta's people. I mean, I need them now. I need them now. Sure. Yeah, they're both out here. Right. I'm not be on time, but I don't care if they're late, but I'm not be on time. On time? Yeah. We'll have to move down from the door because the case never comes out. So, y'all yeah, stood on that one. Thank you. I'm busy now. That's what I like about photos. They get rid of they sure do. They hard to get 34.9. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah, they do. The web place has been there a long, long time. You ain't, oh, they got me. It's fun. Oh, God. This will be muted. Do you know how to unmute the word? This is muted, Tom Slain, you up the back. Are you lame? 
Kevin Marvin. Who would be next? All right, ours is unmuted, but it looks like theirs is still muted. So, yes, yeah. I like the first you made it down to the can you hear me at the jail? Yes, sir. Okay. What is your name, please? Thomas Lane. My Mr. Lane is on page 86. Lane, you are here today to be arraigned on an uh, indictment charging you with reckless endangerment and unlawful drug paraphernalia. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer? Um, I have Flanagan. You have Mike Flanagan? Yes, sir. The conspiracy case, Judge, and I don't know if he represents him. I assume he does. Obviously. We'll put him down anyway. So, Mr. Flanagan is his lawyer, and does he have, have is he all on another case? Wiretap conspiracy, Judge. I know, but I was just, I don't yes. see that charge here, but. Oh, this is right underneath that. This one is. It is on page 86, Judge. It's right on the top. Well, we have here is 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, 86, reckless endangerment, drug paraphernalia. He's underneath. There's two. The, right right above it, this is Jessica Johnson and then Thomas Miller and Lane Jr. All right. I see that. I see that one above it. I wasn't. He's the co defendant in that case. Okay. Mr. Lane, your lawyer is Mr. Flanagan. <clears throat> your uh, conspiracy case involving the 27 defendants has been reset for March the 1st. Mr. Flanagan is aware of that. And we're um, putting your last day to enter a plea will be February the 20th. Mr. Flanagan will be in touch with you and talk with you about getting your case ready for trial or for disposition, okay? Oh, uh, you mean trial, like, but I have plea offers before that. Yes, I mean, Mr. Flanagan will take care of that. He'll he'll make some discussions with the state about trying to resolve your case by some sort of a plea agreement. If yes, not, sir. Your, trial, your trial will be with the other 27, uh, 26 defendants on March the 1st if you don't resolve it by agreement. All right. Um, I talked to Flanagan about a bond reduction on that. What? Mr. Flanagan is going to have to talk to you about that. I don't have anything that, I mean, I don't have anything before me that indicates that he's gotten an agreement on it. So. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Yes, March 1st. No problem. What is your name, sir? Evan Marvin. Uh, Mr. Marvin is on page 88. All right, um, Mr. Marvin, you are here today to be, uh, because your case is one of the, I believe this is Mr. Atchison's case, and he has asked for your case to be moved to next Wednesday for a possible disposition. So we are setting your case for next Wednesday so that Mr. Atchison and you can talk about trying to resolve your case, okay? All right. Thank you. Are you Ronnie McCoy? Yes, sir. McCoy, you're here today because you are to be arraigned on a new charge, but you also have a uh, charge out of the uh, 27 defendant conspiracy case that uh, Mr. McCoy, I believe you're Matthew Brahman. Is that your lawyer that's representing you in that case? That's correct. All right. Well, he was here yesterday and we have reset that case for the 1st of March, first day of March of 2024. And then we've given you a date of 20, uh, February the 20th for a status and a final plea. <clears throat> but you also have a new arraignment on docket number 2023 CR281. Are you planning for Mr. Broman to represent you on that as well? I uh, guess, sir. Right. 
For purposes of arraignment, I will supply Mr. Broman with a copy of that new charge. Do you want that read to you in open court as a 12 count indictment? I'm sorry, I don't understand you. I have a 12 count indictment that uh, we're going to supply to your lawyer, Mr. Broman. Uh, to arraign you, I must either read that to you or you can waive it, waive the formal reading and enter a plea of not guilty. Do you want to do that? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So he's waived the formal reading of the indictment. We'll enter a plea of not guilty. Trial date will be March the 1st. Last day to enter a plea will be February the 20th on the status and plea date. And uh, we will supply Mr. Broman with a copy of these charges and show that he is your attorney. Okay. Thank you. He'll be in touch with you and talk to you about trying to resolve your case. All right. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. What is your name, please? Cartel McKeever. All right. Mr. McKeever, you're here today to be uh, because Mr. I believe you have a one of the conspiracy cases that Mr. Duggar is your attorney and Mr. Duggar was here yesterday and we have reset your trial date on those conspiracy cases due to the volume of evidence to March the 1st of 2024. And you're going to have a last plea date of February 20th of 2024. Mr. Duggar will be in touch with you to, to discuss your case and get you ready for trial. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Dimitri Miles. Yes, sir. Mr. Miles, you're here to be arraigned on two counts of probation violation. Do you have the right to an attorney? Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Yes, sir. All right. Public defender will be appointed. We accept the appointment, Your Honor. We acknowledge receipt of the petition. We waive formal reading and ask that this matter be set in November, please. All right. Set for hearing on November 28th, 2023. And the public defender will be talking with you about your case to get it ready for, for hearing. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, uh, I got a question. All right. Is there any way I could get a bond? That's something you're going to have to talk with your lawyer about. Mr. Uh, Sensing has just indicated he thinks he can get it done on the 27th if we could set it. All right. You I think he, you, Judge? I thought he had a new charge, but that's already been disposed of, so we can go ahead and get it done. All right. So we're we can put him on the 27th. Yes, sir. All right. We're going to put you next Wednesday. Um, let your lawyer see if you can get your case worked out. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. All right, are you Jacob Monroe Morgan? Uh, no, sir, I'm Raphael Joseph Napolitan. Oh, Raphael Napolitan is on page 92. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Napolitan, you are uh, here on a, to be arraigned on a charge of probation violation. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Uh, if I could have an attorney, yes, please. All right, public defender will be appointed. We accept the appointment, acknowledge receipt of the petition, uh, waive reading, and uh, would like this set on the 27th, I believe. Uh, do you want it on the 27th? Yes, sir. Yes, right. please. We're going to set you for hearing on September the 27th. That's next Wednesday. The public defender's been appointed. They'll talk to you about trying to resolve your case. Understood, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Morgan. Morgan. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. What is your name? Jacob Morgan. Morgan, page 91. Morgan, you're here. Uh, Mr. Flanagan is your attorney. And he is involved. You were set for trial Friday, but your case is going to be continued because Mr. Flanagan is involved in a murder case and is not available to try your case. 
So we are sending your case for the 26th of September to give you an opportunity, give your lawyer a chance to see what he can work out or set a new trial date. So that's yes. next. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Good afternoon. Are you Carl Norvington? Yes, sir. Mr. Northington, uh, you're represented by the public defender, and I believe what we need to, why he's on the docket is we need to set him a trial date and a plea date, right? Yes. All right. Need uh, a trial date, please, General. Who, who my attorney? Pardon? Who is my attorney? Who is my lawyer? Well, you have three different public defenders who are all here. I'm not sure which one of them. I think it'll be Mr. Justin Sensing. Mr. Mr. Justin Sensing is the lawyer that will likely represent you, Mr. Northington. Okay, can I, can I get a bond? Well, I'm going to let him talk to you about that because uh, all I can do right now is to give you a new trial date. Mr. Sensing will talk with you about a bond situation and try to see what can be worked out. If there's can't be reached by an agreement, then we'll have, let him set a, a uh, motion for a hearing, all right? Okay, okay, thanks. Okay. I think it's March 22nd. General March 22nd? Yes. March 22nd will be the trial date. March 12th will be the last day to enter a plea. And the status hearing date will be February 20th. Thank you. All right, Mr. Sensing will be up to talk to you, Mr. Northington, to see what he can work out. All right, are you Dylan Olivas? Yes, sir. Believe us, you are. Uh, we need to set a sentencing hearing on you for community corrections, if I understand correctly. And judge, I don't know who the original judge is, and I don't know if that will make a difference or not. But I believe he was one who was admitted, waived, and furloughed. We need to see who the judge was, because obviously that's the judge that needs to hear it. And I'm not sure who it was. It's been a really long time, I think. Hmm. Your Honor, I, I just want to put it in effect, really. I mean, I just want to go ahead and serve it. That's what they need to happen. I haven't brought it over. I'll probably handle it this afternoon. So, Josh, yeah, I'm, I don't want to, we don't have to even, I'm guilty, I'm ready to serve it. We can put it in effect. As soon as you want to put it in effect, we'll do that. Hold on just a second. Let me make sure of what we're, what you're pleading to. All right, yes, sir. All right, I accepted his plea on the original charge in March of this year. And then we granted him a furlough. <clears throat> and he was placed on community corrections. And <clears throat> then he left that uh, Hope Center in the middle of the night. So it's basically a violation of his, of his Senate, of his probation, community corrections probation. Do you have any problems with allowing him to dispose of this case by entering a plea? No, sir, if that's the what only, he... The only issue that I think, I'm sorry, I was speaking with General Wojnarowski. I believe he may have an escape charge pending in General Sessions Court. I believe what? We can bring. I just thought he might have a pending escape charge for the related to the furlough that was granted in this case, and I didn't know if it might be best to dispose of it all. But I guess we can go ahead and do it. I just don't know where it's at. If, if the court wants to bring him over, I'm, I'm sure that. I want to do it this afternoon. We'll bring him over on the 27th. Okay. Well, then by that time. Your lawyer needs to have chance to see whether or not there's going to be another charge because you left the Hope Ministry uh, on the on the furlough, which was potentially could be a, an escape charge. So uh, looking out for your best interest, what they want to do is make sure that whatever you do with your case is going to dispose of all of your cases. You understand that? Yes, sir. We're, we're going to put you for the 27th, which is next Wednesday, and have you brought down so that we can dispose of your cases, all of your cases. So we'll, okay. we'll see so you on the 27th, and your public defender will be here to Help you with that. Public defender will be appointed except for the 27th of September. Okay, Judge. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, when I come on the 20th, we're, we're going to handle the escape charge too? 
If there is an escape charge, that's why we're resetting you for the okay. 27th okay. to let right. try to find that out, okay? Okay, yes, sir. All right. All Thank right. you. Thanks. Thanks. Hmm. Good afternoon. Are you, afternoon. are you Derek Owens? Yes, sir. Mr. Owens, you're here to be arraigned on a charge of probation violation. Correct. You have an attorney. Do you want a lawyer to represent you? Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. And they're here in the courtroom and they'll be given a copy of your charge. You wish a formal reading of that? He also has an arraignment on a, well, I'm sorry, both of those are violations of probation. We accept the appointment, Your Honor. We waive formal reading. And could we set this on the 27th of this month, please? September the 27th. All right. We will see you on that day to let your lawyers see what they can work out. Thank you. Thank you. Is charged with escape out of general sessions court. He's got a $5,000 bond. His court date for that is. Would you be able to come up on information by next week? I can, we just leave them on, and if we have to bump it to November, that's fine. Thank you, Officer Howell. I'll let them sort that part out. Yes, sir. All right, good afternoon. What is your name, sir? Robert Owens. Mr. Owens, you're represented by attorney Mike Flanagan. Mr. Flanagan is involved in a murder trial and therefore unable to be here in court today or tomorrow when your case was set for trial. Therefore, he's asked that we move your cases to the 26th of uh, September, which is next Tuesday, to let him get you a new trial date if you can't get it resolved. All right. We'll see you next week. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon. Are you Anthony Thomas Quick? Yes, sir. All right. This is a uh, public defender has a motion to withdraw. Yes, sir. This is Mr. Stevens motion. He has a conflict. He previously represented the co-defendant in this same case. All right. Public defender was appointed to represent you, Mr. Quick, because of the fact that they have discovered that they have a conflict. Does he have one of the um, conspiracy cases? No. He does, does not? Okay. I'm going to have to allow the... Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to allow your lawyer to, your public defender to withdraw, and I'm going to appoint Mr. Scott Saul to represent you. You have a January trial date of January the 11th, and that day will remain the same. You're just going to have a different lawyer, Mr. Saul will be notified and he'll be in touch with you about his appointment and representing you and get you ready for trial in January. Thank you. Good afternoon. What's your name? Robert Kilantan. Mr. Quillentown, you are here today to be arraigned on a charge, an indictment charging you with driving a revoked license, first offense, violation of financial responsibility, and failure to appear. Um, <clears throat> and we have a motion, too, for the bonding company on Mr. Quillentown. So, Mr. Quillentown, do you have uh, the right to an attorney? Do you want a lawyer to represent you? No. You do not? No. Okay. You understand? May I see his indictment? All right, you have a three count indictment that charges you uh, with the offenses that I've just told you about. If you're gonna represent yourself, then I need to arraign you on these charges. I can supply you with a copy of the uh, indictment for you to read at your leisure, 
or later today I can read this to you in open court. Do you want to read this indictment yourself or do you want me to read it to you? Uh, you I'll read it. All right. Should I always waive the formal reading of the indictment? He'll enter a plea of not guilty on his behalf. We need to... Uh, Your Honor, I've spoken with General Strivoli. I think we can get this resolved today if we could get him over here. And how soon do you think you can get him over here? As quick as the jail can get him over here. Well, we can set him on VLP day. Either way. I don't know what all we've got brought and we're bringing over right well, now. We've got one right now, Judge, is Tesman Davis. Okay. All right, well, let's bring Mr. Quillentown, the public defender, will represent you and try to resolve your cases by agreement today if you are amenable to that. So we're yes, going to we're gonna have you brought over to see if we can resolve it, okay? Yes, sir. All right, here's a copy. Mr. Howard will appoint you to represent him and Thank you, have him brought over as quickly as I can get him here. We'll see if we can bring you over, all right? Judge, can we be heard on our bond motion? Who is it? Mr. Quilanta. I'm bringing yes. it over. I'm looking here when, when he gets there. Okay. He has a right to be present. Yeah, if uh, the case is resolved, Mr. Baker, it may resolve your issue anyway. I'll let him get an order so I can bill it. <laughs> All right, Mr. Quillentine, you may step out. We are going to bring you over. Thank you. Good afternoon. What is your name, please? Uh, Carl Redeker. All right, Mr. Redeker, this is... Uh, I think the public defender's case is, case is being set for March, and then Pfizer Bonding has filed a motion to be relieved from Mr. Redeker's bond. He also has a new case and arraignment on a failure to appear. So we'll let's go ahead and handle the public defender already represents Mr. Redeker, and let's do the arraignment. I'll appoint the public defender in docket number 2023-CR332 on his failure to appear. We accept the appointment, Your Honor. Waive formal reading, entering plea of not guilty. Plea of not guilty is entered. Trial date is set for March 22nd, 2024. The last day to enter a plea will be March the 12th. We'll also have a status day for March, uh, for February 20th of 2024. All right. Would I be able to get a bond reduction on the bond that I do have? Mm, well, you have to talk to your lawyer about that. What you've got right now is your bonding company because you missed a court date is asking to be relieved. The bonding companies have a really powerful lobbying group. And what they do is they get these laws passed that say that you miss a court date as soon as, and there's an outstanding warrant, rather than them having to pay the money into the court, uh, they're given a period of time to bring you into court. And as soon as you get arrested on a failure to appear, then they can come in and by statute, they're entitled to be uh, relieved from the bond. So your bonding company is being relieved of its bond obligation on you. So you don't have a bond. You have the same bond amount, but you don't have a valid bond in place. Well, would I be able to bond down on those charges again? Certainly can if you make a new bond. Okay, but on my FTA is the 75,000. Is that still in place or, or how does that work? Whatever the, whatever the bond was when you failed to appear is the bond amount that you have. Okay, it was that. Well, the, on my FTA, they gave me a seventy-five thousand dollar bond. Well, I don't know what I don't know any of those things. I'm just explaining to you that that's the way it works. You have a lawyer now. You let your lawyer. You already have a lawyer, but you need to talk to your lawyer about those issues so that you can figure out what you can do about a bond. Tennessee bond, uh, Pfizer bonding will be relieved of its bond based upon his failure to appear. Mr. Baker, do you have an order on your case? I do, Judge. All right, step aside, please. We'll bring in the next inmate. Mr. Redeker's cases are all set for March 22nd. What is your name, sir? James Reed. 
Uh, Mr. Reed, you're here to be arraigned on a charge of probation violation. You have the right to have an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Yes. My public defender is going to be appointed. We accept the appointment. We waive reading of the petition and we can set that on the 27th, Your Honor. All right, public defenders appointed, plea of not guilty is entered, set for hearing September 27th. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon. Are you George Robichaud? Yes, sir. Robichaud, you're here to be arraigned on a charge of aggravated assault and domestic assault. You have the right to an attorney. Do you want a lawyer to represent you? Yes. Public defender will be appointed. We accept the appointment. We acknowledge receipt of the indictment, waive formal reading of the same, and enter a plea of not guilty. Plea of not guilty is entered. Public defender is appointed. March 6th, 2024 will be the trial date. The uh, status and last day to enter a plea will be February 20th of 2024. Or, and of course, if you resolve the case earlier, you can get it in court earlier. But thank you. Your lawyer will be up to talk with you about your case and get you ready for a trial or a disposition. Careful. Good afternoon. Are you Sean Randolph Scott? Yes, sir. Scott, you're here to be arraigned on a charge of theft of property, uttering a forged instrument, and criminal simulation. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Well, I tried to get a hold of Mike Flanagan, but I couldn't, so I need a public defender. All right. The reason you can't reach Mr. Flanagan is he's trying a murder case. That's why all of his clients are having their cases reset. The public defender here and available since you're in jail, I will appoint them. If you are able to connect with Mr. Flanagan and hire him, then you can certainly have him, he will be glad to replace and the public defender will be glad to let him replace them. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and appoint the public defender at this point. We accept the appointment, we acknowledge receipt of the indictment, waive formal reading of the same and enter plea of not guilty. Plea of not guilty is entered, I need a trial date, please. March 22nd. March 22nd. March okay. 22nd for trial, March the 12th for the last day to enter a plea. And, I wanted to plead guilty, though. All right. I understand that, and we'll be glad to let your public defender talk with you. And if he just after he meets with you and talks with you, that you two agree that it's in your best interest, then we'll bring you over next week and dispose of your case. All okay. Right? Thank you. Good afternoon. What is your name, please? What's your name? Mickey Sessler. Mickey Sessler. Mr. Sessler, your attorney, Mr. Yao, has filed a motion to withdraw as your attorney. Uh, let me see that. Mr. Yao, you want to address your motion? Judge, I filed a motion because of the severe breakdown in communication that I've had with Mr. Sessler. I met with him yesterday in the jail, and we did fill out an indigency form. I do have that, but he did indicate to me that he's spoken with other counsel, and he wishes to retain independent counsel separate and apart from me. So I'm asking the court to simply grant my motion to withdraw. Mr. Uh, Sessler, you've heard Mr. Yao state what his basis is, do you agree that uh, you are able to hire an attorney and that that is your intention? Uh, I do want to hire an uh, attorney, Your Honor, but I would like to, uh, he's, uh, he's filing a motion to go off my case for lack of communication. I definitely agree with that. It's definitely been a bad, uh, it's been a bad ordeal on the communication. Um, my family tried to contact uh, Mr. Yao a couple of times and uh, there was a, um, a miscommunication between him and my mother at the beginning of our uh, our case, and uh, that was after I paid him eleven thousand five hundred dollars to him to represent me on this whole case. And uh, after after that, I've had a tried to have a couple meetings with him at the jail, and he wasn't able to come. And then we set up a Zoom meeting, 
And then, uh, I mean, well, I was being able to contact, but it's been very difficult the whole way. I'm, 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 a, I'm in agreement of letting him uh, go off my case, but I feel like I'm entitled to some something, uh, some part of my money back. Well, let me say this. I am not, it is not my position, nor is it my um, intention to get in the middle of an attorney-client relationship. The Board of Professional Responsibility has a fee dispute section, and that is the section that will probably uh, need to be addressed if Mr. Yao wants to talk with you about making a refund or partial refund or whatever. That is entirely up to the two of you, but I don't negotiate between lawyers and clients about fees. What I will tell you is, is that obviously there is a section of the Board of Professional Responsibility that deals with fee disputes, and that would be likely where this would have to go if you can't reach an agreement. If you intend to hire another lawyer, then I would suggest you get with that lawyer, and then maybe he and Mr. Yao can talk about uh, that particular situation. So, Mr. Yao, you've heard his statement. I'm going to grant your motion. Mr. Sessler has indicated he's going to hire a new counsel, and I will grant him that opportunity. Does Mr. Sessler have a trial date? He does. Okay. She's scheduled for October 31st, plea date and trial November 2nd, with a violation hearing scheduled for November 28th. All right. The trial date is November what? Second. November 2nd for trial and November. So I think that's the reason that Judge Wallace had indicated that he was going to set your motion to withdraw in front of him because it's his trial. Uh, it was more of a communication breakdown. Into... All right. Motion withdrawal is granted. <clears throat> trial date remains uh, November the 2nd. Last day to enter a plea will remain November, uh, October 31st. And Mr. Sessler, I'd suggest you get in touch with whoever you plan to hire as quickly as possible. They can talk with Mr. Yow about any other issues regarding uh, the fee dispute. Your Honor, Your Honor, is there any way that I could have a little bit of time since this communication between my attorney and I broke down to I can have this put off or reset till I can get them, you know, that. That's quite a bit of money just to, you know, and then me right here at trial just to, you know, be sitting here like this. I'm just asking for a little bit more time if possible. I don't have a problem with giving you more time, but that case is not set in front of me. And okay. as a result, I think you'll have to address that with Judge uh, Larry Wallace, who is the judge who will be hearing your trial. And I feel, I feel confident he will be glad to give you some additional time. Um, but right now, that's the only thing I can do for you, okay? And your suggestion to me is just write the board of professionals and I'm get them. I'm simply telling you that there are, I don't handle fee disputes right. between lawyers and clients. There is an avenue for that, but right. that's something that I do. Okay, that's fine. Thank so you, Your Honor. You know, don't do that. It's up to you. And Mr. Yow may be willing to talk with you about your request, but I don't handle fee disputes between clients and their lawyers. Thank you, Your Honor. We'll leave it set for that. And um, Mr. On the 31st of October, he'll obviously need to be brought before the judge to let him know whether or not he's been able to hire another lawyer. All right, thank you. I'll draft an order. Thank you, Judge. Good afternoon. Are you Don uh, Robert David Sewell? Yes, sir. Sewell, your lawyer is Mr. Uh, Don Hemmelberg, and I believe he represents you on all of these cases. And is this one that was going to be on the third of uh, March the first? Yes, your honor. All right, <clears throat> because your case is one of the twenty-seven defendant uh, conspiracy charges that we are indictment that we have. All of those cases have been set for trial on March the 1st of 2024, and we've now set a final appearance day, status day, and plea day for February the 20th. Mr. Himmelberg uh, will be in touch with you to discuss your case and get you ready for trial. There's a, a great deal of a volume of evidence to be analyzed by the defendants in these cases, and that's the reason for the continuance. All right, your lawyer will be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. What's your name, please? 
Attorney Joe Shelton. Mr. Shelton, you're here to be arraigned on a charge of violation of probation. You have the right to an attorney. Do you want a lawyer to represent you? Um, can I represent myself? You can, yes. I this represent is... myself. All right. Let me see, Mr. Shelton. All right, Mr. Shelton, you're here, uh, and I'm going to arraign you on a charge of violation of probation. It's alleged that you were placed on probation on or about the 15th day of September of 2020 on charge of possession of a firearm by a felon, sentenced to six years in the Tennessee Department of Corrections. The affidavit violates and uh, alleges that you were in violation of Rule 5 <clears throat> in that you will uh, fail, you failed to report to probation on August the 2nd for intake as instructed on July 26th of 2023 and Rule 6 that you uh, have failed to report for intake and have not contacted probation or reported since August 1st of 2023 um, that you have absconded from probation is the allegation in that. So my talk, man. I reported about 42 or three days early because the don't ride ahead and I was waiting on my disability paperwork to get back in the mailbox where I just moved to with my brother and I was going to get my disability straightened out the same day. I'm not hearing your case right now, Mr. Shelton. I'm simply arraigning you. We will set you for a trial September the 27th. We'll see you next week and have a hearing on it at that time. September 22nd. Pardon? September 22nd. September the 27th. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Are you Jonathan Russell, Russell Schrader? Yes, sir. Schrader, you're here to be arraigned on a charge of probation violation. In addition, you have a new charge in 2023 CR 269, of possession of methamphetamine with intent to sell possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, prohibited weapon, simple possession. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Yes, sir. All right. The second case is not one of the conspiracy cases, I no, assume. Judge, All right. Public defender will be appointed. Did you say conspiracy cases? I'm saying I was asking a question of the district attorney. Yours is not one of the 27 defendant conspiracy cases. So this is um, probation violation and then the methamphetamine possession with intent to sell and the assorted others. Public defenders here, they're appointed. I accept the appointment, Your Honor. I waive a uh, formal reading. It appears that this new case may be a basis for these violations, in which right. case I'd ask that we set it all on January the 12th. All right. May I ask the court for a bond? You can ask your lawyer to file a motion for it, and then we'll be glad to hear it at the appropriate time. But today is just for arraignment. So for arraignment purposes, we'll find that the defendant has entered a plea of not guilty, set for trial January 17th. Sorry. And uh, last day to enter a plea will be January 12th. Public defender will come up and talk with you, and they'll talk with you about the bond issue and try to see what they can do about getting a bond set for you, OK? Sure, thank you. Thank you. What's the VOP? Pardon? The VOP day in January, is that when the um, January, what is the VOP day in January, Mr. Yeah, okay. oh, yeah. It might be the 24th, Judge. <clears throat> That'll be January 24th. Thank you. You're welcome. Good afternoon. What is your name, please? Devontae Spencer. I'm sorry, who? Devontae Spencer. Page 104. Right. Mr. Spencer, you're here to be arraigned on a charge of violation of probation. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Yes. Public defender will be appointed. We accept the appointment of way for reading of the petition and we request this be set on the 27th, please. September the 27th for a hearing. Public defender is appointed. We'll see you next week. All right. Thank you.
Good afternoon. What is your name, please? Monte Springer. All right. And uh, we would uh, we'd wait for a reading and uh, enter a plea of not guilty and uh, go ahead and set it. And we're we're working on a, uh, a proposed furlough uh, by agreement. All right, so Mr. Springer, your lawyer is here in the courtroom, and he's indicated that um, we'll waive a formal reading of the charges, enter a plea of not guilty, and set it for hearing on the 27th That's of correct. September. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Thank you. Good afternoon. What is your name, please? Nathan Sweeney. Sweeney, you're here to be arraigned on an indictment charging you with forgery up to $1,000 and theft up to $1,000. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? I would like to try to speak to the DA if possible. <clears throat> well, the DA was is not available to come to the jail to talk with you. Um, are you wanting to try to represent yourself? Is there some reason you don't want your want to have a lawyer who is trying to help you? Oh, I mean, I'll take a public defender if possible. We'll appoint the public defender to represent you. We accept the appointment. We acknowledge receipt of the indictment. Waive formal reading of the same and enter plea of not guilty. Plea of not guilty is entered, set for a trial. Trial date, please, General. March the 20th, March 19th. March 19th for trial, March 12th for the last day to enter a plea. Status hearing will be February 20th. Your lawyer will talk with you about your case and if you're able to get it worked out uh, more quickly than your March trial date, then he'll be glad to try to help you with that. What? All right. Is Thank there a bond on it? Pardon? Is there a bond on it? I'm sure there is a bond on it. I don't know what the amount is, but your lawyer can check on that for you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. What is your name, please? Shane Tally. Tally, you're here today uh, to be arraigned on a charge of possession of uh, methamphetamine, 26 grams or more. Possession of cocaine, simple possession of a Schedule II drug. Is this one of those? It's not judged, but Mr. Tommy Overton was here yesterday, and he said he was going to represent. All right. Mr. Tommy Overton is your lawyer. He was here yesterday, and uh, therefore he's waived the arraignment for you and, and entered a plea of not guilty for you. So the trial date will be January 17th of 2024. Last day to enter a plea will be January 12th. Your lawyer will be in touch, but you, he was here yesterday and because we couldn't get to the jail docket, he went ahead and left, but he'll be in touch with you about getting you ready for your trial. All right. Um, can I make bond on, on my charges? <laughs> bond on those charges if, uh, if you're able to make the bond, but that's up to you and Mr. Overton to work that out. Okay, but um, from my understanding, they had a hold for court on me. That I don't know about. All I'm doing today is arraigning you, and Mr. Overton is not here, so I can't answer that question. All right, thank you. Just have Mr. Overton look into it for you, please. Okay, come on, sir. Good afternoon. What is your name, please? Nathan Wall. While you are here today to be arraigned on a charge of theft of property, $10,000 to $60,000, you also have another indictment charging you with theft of property from twenty-five dollars to $10,000, and aggravated assault on that case. And then you have a third indictment charging you with theft of property from $60,000 to $250,000, and a fourth indictment charging you with theft of property from $2,500 to $10,000, you have a fifth indictment charging you with theft from $10,000 to $60,000, theft up to $1,000, fraudulent use of a credit card under $1,000, theft from $2,500 to $10,000, and criminal impersonation. 
you have a sixth or seventh, I've lost count, uh, indictment charging you with theft of property from $2,500 to $10,000. On all of those charges, you have a right to an attorney. Do you want a lawyer to represent you? Yes, sir. Public defender will be appointed. We accept the appointment, acknowledge receipt of the indictments, waive formal reading of the same, and enter a plea of not guilty. Plea of not guilty is entered. Trial date is set for March 22nd on all charges. Last day to enter a plea will be March the 12th. It will be a status hearing on February the 20th, 2024. Can I go to uh, drug court, sir? Uh, not today, no. No, I know not today, but is there a way we can schedule it? Well, you can talk to your lawyer about that. There's a process for that to uh, to be applied for and some other things. Uh, I'm not sure if your case would fit in that criteria, but you can talk to your lawyer. And they'll tell you how that goes. If, if you want to get the ball rolling on that, just fill out an application on the, the kiosk there, Mr. Wall. I did, and uh, they haven't never said anything about acceptance. All right, well, just wait. All right. Your lawyer will be up to talk with you about your charges. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Are you Ricky Joe Warren? No, sir. Donald Watts. All right, Mr. Watts, I'm sorry. Mr. Lockhart, is your lawyer? Yes, sir. Except for trial Thursday, is that correct? Judge, um, Mr. Watts, I'm showing that he currently has three uh, pending indictments he's already been arraigned on, and he has one, two, three, four new ones that he needs to be arraigned on, and Mr. Lockhart said that he is going to represent him on all of those. Um, and then what I'd like to do is put them all on the March 19th trial date to have them all together. And I had talked to Mr. Lockhart about that yesterday. All right, Mr. Watts, apparently you have a number of other charges that are not on today's docket that your lawyer wants to try to resist, get them all together so that he can try to resolve them. Um, and so he's requested, along with the district attorney, that your case be reset from September the 21st to the March 19th, 2024 trial date. The last day to enter a plea would then be March the 12th, and there would be a status hearing on February the 20th of 2024. So Mr. Lockhart will help you with that, and he will uh, explain to you what's taking place and what you all out, okay? Uh, I was under the impression that everything was already handled. My trial date is supposed to be November 16th. I don't have that down. Let's see what the uh, Mr. Watts has new charges to be arraigned on. Did Mr. Locker waive the arraignment on those? Uh, as far as I know, uh, yes, sir. All because right. I waived up my rights to everything prior to me hiring uh, Mr. Locker. And then uh, we went to court in, I want to say, um, well, that was in. in July or June, whenever I went to court, and then I hired him after that, and he came up here and spoke to me. But they had already given me the uh, the trial date for November sixteenth, and then the sentencing for just shortly after that. Well, I'm not sure what because uh, I went in front of uh, Miss Vanderbilt, I believe. I don't show that there are any uh, of these cases that I have on my docket, and I have six of them that uh, are set for November. The trial dates on the four new charges that we're gonna arraign you on are set in March. And the two cases you did have uh, previously, which were both simple possession, were set for trial Thursday of this week, but they're being moved to that March 19th date. For purposes of this case, we'll show that Mr. Willocker waived the arraignment uh, on these charges, the new four, Yesterday, when he was here in court, entered a plea of not guilty. The trial dates are set for March 19th of 2024. The last day to enter a plea will be March 20th, and the status hearing will be February the 20th. I'm sorry, Mar last day to enter a plea will be March 12th. The status hearing will be February 20th. And you need to contact Mr. Locker to let him explain to you what's going on and how why you're not set for trial on November the 16th. But I don't find any of your cases are set for that day. Okay. All right. Thank you. Talk Thank to you. you.
Good afternoon. What is your name? James Watts. Watts, your lawyer is Mr. Flanagan. Mr. Flanagan is in trial on a murder case and not able to be in court today or for your trial on Friday. So all of your cases are being, your case is being moved to September the 26th for Mr. Flanagan to try to let us know if you've got something worked out or if you're going to be, uh, or if you're going to uh, need a new trial date. So we'll see you next Tuesday. Okay, thank you. I'm not actually sure we need to bring all of this cases down until that. Good afternoon. Are you Jeremy Watts? Yes, sir. Watts, you're here to be arraigned on a charge of aggravated assault, reckless endangerment, evading arrest, revoked license, third offense, uh, running a stop sign, and vandalism. You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Yes, sir. All right, public defender will be appointed. We accept the appointment. We acknowledge receipt of the indictment, waive formal reading of the same, and enter a plea of not guilty. Plea of not guilty is entered, set for trial January 17th. Last day to enter a plea will be January 12th. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. What is your name, please? Jeffrey Wells. Wells, Mr. Wainick, your lawyer is here in the uh, courtroom. Judge, I filed a motion to continue on this case. We have located a witness, well, what we believe to be a witness. She's working out of town in Texas. So we're trying to either find out how we can get in contact with her there or when she's going to be back here or what. But this witness, it would be if she is a witness to what we believe she is, she would be material to the case. And I've conveyed, conveyed that to uh, General Stribling. And she's, my understanding is she has no opposition to continuing this. Any opposition from the state? Danny? Maybe I talked to Danny. I don't know, I talked to, I talked to so many of them, I think. <laughs> Who I talk, did you I talk to? to? I talked to somebody and they said that they didn't have any opposition to it. So, so somebody from the district attorney's somebody office. Somebody from the district attorney's office. That conversation did happen, I promise. All right, well, we'll we will reset it. When is somebody's trial date in March? Seventh, Judge of March. March seventh. All right, March seventh, twenty twenty four will be the new trial date, and the last day to enter a plea will be that uh, February twentieth status and plea date. May I address a couple other announcements? Certainly. Yesterday we had <clears throat> Mr. Trevor. Hold on, Mr. Well, are you Mr. Wells still? Oh yes, we need to. Tell. Mr. Wells, I'll be up to the jail to explain what we're doing, but I've talked to uh, your family and located a witness that's working out of town in Texas. So I need to be able to speak with her, but I'll come up to the jail and explain all this to you, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, what do you need, Mr. Okay, on page, I believe it was page 40, page 47 and 48, there was Trevor Reed. We set him for 926 for his motions. General Allen thought it was on 927. I have several cases in Hickman County appointed cases on that on 926. And since General Allen thought it was 927, can we move it to 927 anyway? 927 on Mr. Trevor David Reed. <laughs> I'll submit the green order just so there's something on the record. Right. Um, also, tomorrow on case on uh, Kimberly Dawson, that's on page 19 and 20. Uh, case 2022 CR324. A motion to compel. I'll strike that motion but it will not be heard tomorrow. All right, the motion to compel will be stricken. And it appears we're going in alphabetical order up here. And I was wondering, uh, Jeffrey Britt uh, should be on the docket for arraignment on a VOP. 
Who? Yeah. Jeffrey Britt on page 63. I was wondering if we skipped him or I was asleep. He's in the Montgomery County Jail. As we, we've been just letting them bring the inmates out at the Dixon County Jail. He's here. And because of the fact that yeah, Mr. Yeah. Britt was in Montgomery County, we didn't do it. You uh, represent him except I, for arraignment. I do, and he, he's here. They have him here in custody. He was brought in last week, I think Thursday. Where is he? At, here at the jail or? At the jail here in Dixon, yes. Right, well, we'll see if we can bring him out in a little bit. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Who, who are you? What is your name, please? Harry Wales. Harry Daniel Wells on page 114. You are represented by Mr. Flanagan. Mr. Flanagan. Yes, yes sir. Murder case, and he cannot be here today or for your trial went Thursday. And as a result, he's filed a motion to continue. So we're putting all of his cases on September the 26th for him to uh, either resolve them or get a new trial date. So your, your case will be reset for September 26th. Okay. Thank you. He has two arraignments. We just set those arraignments on September the 26th. Everything on Mr. Wells' case will be on September 26th. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. What is your name? Jonathan Mark Williams. Williams, you're here for arraignment on a charge of probation violation. You have the right to an attorney. Do you want a lawyer to represent you? Uh, yes, sir. I guess so. I'm not for sure if I need one or not. Public defender will be appointed. We accept the appointment. We waive formal reading and a plea of not guilty. Plea of not guilty is entered. Do you know what day you want to set this one? We set that one in November, please. All right. Set for hearing November the 27th. 28th, I'm sorry, 28th. Your lawyer needs to talk with you about your case and see what else you've got pending so that he can try to help you resolve them, okay? Sir, may I speak, Your sure. Honor? Uh, I was gonna see if y'all could drop the hold on the violation so I can get out and get back taking my, care of my grandfather. No. Yes, sir. Sorry, I mean, I just will tell you that- I paid my court simple. Well, it's, you have a probation violation, so it's not as simple as just saying that when a judge issues a warrant that is a hold for a hearing, it's because you're not reporting, not doing something, or you violated it. You don't need to say anything about what happened because yes, sir. you incriminate yourself. I'm just explaining to you that when a judge puts a hold for a hearing on it, then that means that you have, you have done something that necessitates you being held in jail until there can be a hearing. So your lawyer will talk to you, and if he finds that there is a basis upon which he can request a bond to be set or that that can be dropped, then he'll file the appropriate motions. But when you're asking me today if I can just drop that hold for a hearing, no, I can't. So I wasn't trying to be short with you, but I wanted to explain to you why, okay? Let your lawyer talk to you. Let them give you the advice that you need, and then you can go from there. All right, thank you. Jeffrey. All right, what is your name, sir? Chad Edward Wilson. Mr. Wilson, you're here to be arraigned on a charge of violation of probation. You have the right to a lawyer. Do you wish to have a lawyer? Yes, please. Public defender. Accept the appointment and wait reading and we request this be set in November, please. November the 28th for hearing, public defenders appointed a plea of not guilty is, is entered. Your lawyer will be up to talk with you and try to get you ready for your hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Are you Jared? Hey. Is your name Jarrett Wilson? No, sir. It's Jeffrey Britt. Jeffrey Britt. Yes, sir. Mr. 
Britt, I, I believe you are here for arraignment on the VOP. I'm Roger Wainick. Your wife has hired me to represent you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Judge will waive formal reading. 63. 63, sorry. I thought you had all these memorized. I'm sorry, Judge. All right. Mr. Wainick sh is shown as the attorney of record. Plea about guilty is entered. When do you want it heard? Uh, can we do it on the 27th? I mean, if, if you're, if you can have the hearing at that point, that's fine. We'll September be, 27th. We'll be ready by then. I think right. that's, that's the early, that's the next VOP date, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Britt, I'll be up to the jail to meet with you. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Honor. Good afternoon. What is your name, please? Jared Wilson. Mr. Wilson, you're here to be arraigned on a uh, number of charges. Do you have a uh, third offense, reckless endangerment, a multiple counts of reckless endangerment, open container, seatbelt violation, violation of financial responsibility, failure to use due care, and failure to yield to an emergency vehicle? You have the right to an attorney. Do you wish to have a lawyer represent you? Yes, Your Honor. Public defender will be appointed. We accept the appointment. We acknowledge receipt of the indictment. Waive formal reading of the same and enter a plea of not guilty. Plea of not guilty is entered. Trial date is set for January the 16th of 2024. Last day to enter a plea will be January 12th of 2024. Public defender will be up to speak with you about your case and get you ready for a hearing. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon. What's your name? Devin Pollard. Kevin Pollard. Devin Pollard. Yes, sir. We addressed that yesterday. All right. Um, your lawyer is Ms. Kelly Jackson Smith, and she has indicated that she has stricken her request for a bond source hearing. So your case is still set for, I believe that set for trial in the next few weeks, is it not? No, it's set in March, Your Honor. We March? have a motion date soon. Oh, the mar motion date. All right. So we'll have motion set in your case, and that will be the next thing that, that takes place, Mr. Pollard. Check, stay in touch with your lawyer, and she'll explain this to you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Be only one more. Yeah, Nicholas Lee should have been on the jail. Lieutenant, do y'all have a Nicholas Lee up there? Nicholas Lee, we have Nicholas Lee. We do have Nicholas Lee. We'll get him just a second. Who is Nicholas Lee on the docket or not? On the I see him now. Just in the interest of time, off chance we get appointed, we can set that this month. On the 27th. Oh, it's great. I know Amy, Amy, the name of the well, Yes, I really do appreciate y'all helping me out with this. No problem. 
Charge of an amended, an original amended and second amended violation of state probation. You have the right to an attorney. Do you want a lawyer? I should have. Uh, I should have John Stevens as a, a appointed lawyer. Mr. Stevens is with the public defender's office, so I am going to appoint them to represent you. And uh, a plea of not guilty will be entered yes, on Judge. behalf of uh, Mr. Stevens, who is not in the courtroom today. I, I'm supposed we'll to have court next week. The 25th. All right. <clears throat> well, I'm going to set you in this court for the 27th. I don't know where you're supposed to be on the 25th, but. All right. Stevens can discuss that with you, but we'll set you for the September 27th. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, sir. Right. You said we have one or two here. We brought down Mr. Kalantan and Mr. Well, I have uh, a motion in the Christopher White case that I set this afternoon. So let's go ahead and take that up while, and then we'll bring those two in myself. So, Christopher White, uh, file, please. Let me locate your motion before we get Judge, I've got my copy you can have. All right, I found it. Thank you. Filed it July 20th of 2023. It's a motion to stay probation pending appeal. That's correct, Judge. All right, you want to go ahead and argue your motion? Judge, I had filed my notice of appeal back on June the 30th, and um, my understanding of the law is pretty clear that once you file a notice of appeal, this court loses jurisdiction. Um, over the defendant. Um, I have cited a case attached to my motion, this Atkinson case, which pretty much affirms that. Now, that doesn't mean that he can't be arrested or charged with some other crime if he commits it after um, uh, the, the notice, notice of appeal is filed or if he engages in some type of conduct that would otherwise be a violation of his probation. That could be used as a basis of a violation in the event he loses the appeal. But 
in terms of where we are right now. It's, it's sort of like if you were to, let's say, if you were to uh, file an appeal bond. You file an appeal bond in order to secure your release pending appeal. There might be some conditions, I guess, of that appeal bond, but there's no reason to file an appeal bond because he was granted probation. We're simply stating that pending the uh, outcome of the appeal, the requirements of his probation, such as reporting and paying restitution, should be stayed pending the outcome of that appeal. So let me ask this question, um, Mr. Scruggs. If I granted your motion and the appellate court upheld the decision or the ruling, <clears throat> would then your client's four-year sentence on probation begin at that point for four years from that point? Correct. And I have discussed that with him, and he uh, understands that. All right. Let me hear from the state. Your Honor, it's, to me, it's kind of a novel issue that there's not much case law. You know, the rules, uh, rules of appellate procedure only address stays in civil proceedings and in the in that civil rule it even even describes that this does not apply to criminal cases um, there is a special stay rule when it comes to appealing to the uh, United, um, United States Supreme Court however there's not a explicit rule in our in our uh, in our procedure to address uh, particularly stays in criminal proceedings um, I've heard I've heard staying uh, jail sentences under certain cir circumstances obviously like when, when a defendant is about to serve 11 months, 29 days, it's very, it would be very common for his sentence to be up before the appellate process worked. And I think, you know, I think a stay would be appropriate in that manner. However, in this case, the defendant was sentenced to four years probation with uh, conditions to report to probation and to, uh, to pay restitution. Um, I don't, I, the state does not believe a stay is, uh, is necessary or adequate in this case, pending <clears throat> appeal. The, the case law that the def um, that defense has provided, um, I would argue, does not necessarily st um, state that the sentence is stayed. It, it just removes the trial court's um, jurisdiction to revoke said probation during a pending appeal. So the state would argue that the defendant could report and he can pay restitution. And if he doesn't, then the, then, then the probation officer can hold that warrant until his appeal has gone through. And then the defendant could face the repercussions of that BOP at the at the conclusions of the bill. Scruggs, you thank you. I'm going to read that case you cited before I rule. So I'll just take. A, I'm going to let you have another say if you want, but I'm going to no, take I, a recess. I was kind of hoping you grant. I have a proposed order. I mean, you can tear it up if you decide not to grant it. Well, let me let me first and foremost uh, take a recess and read that uh, case that you cited so that I can. It's on the last page, they address that. We'll take a short recess. All rise. For the recess.
I did read that case, and essentially the only real relevant part of it is the language that talks about um, whether or not the court retains jurisdiction, or trial court retains jurisdiction, or loses jurisdiction on a probation revocation at the time that the uh, judgment is entered. And I'm of the opinion that it's pretty well consistent with what I've always understood. I don't see that there's really any difference between this and a person who's sentenced to go to prison but files a motion to stay the imposition of that sentence until after the appellate process runs. And as a result, when the appellate court, if they affirm the appellate court, affirms the conviction, then the defendant, they, they issue an order at that time that remands the case with the instructions that the defendant be taken into custody and begin serving his sentence. So I don't see how that's any different than what we're talking about. It's just a probated sentence rather than a, a serving sentence. So I'm going to grant Mr. Uh, Scruggs's motion to stay the imposition of the probation until such time as the appellate process is concluded. Judge, can I get a copy of that to take to the probation sure, office? I'll give this to the clerk and we can make a copy of any. So. All right, we have two individuals who are. General, um, one of the state, there's a state versus China McKeever that I have been handed a request to continue. Judge, that was one we've already addressed. Actually, Brown represents him. Well, I mean, we've already dealt with it good because I'm not signing this. It's, it's in the form of, it's not the form of a motion. It is in the form of a request to continue. And it says, please accept this formal request to continue the plea hearing and trial dates respected to the above mentioned case from September 18th, 19th, 2023 to November 20th, 2023 or a later date. Defense counsel was recently retained and has not had efficient, efficient time to prepare for the above reference case. And then it has entered this 15th day of September, 2023 with a signature line for the judge. So we, I, she was here yesterday, so we announced it all. And, and, and I'm gonna write in big letters, not an appropriate motion <laughs> and have it put in a file. Not an appropriate motion or order. All right, let's bring out the first of our inmates. Are you ready on whoever we have up here? I will be in about 30 seconds, Your Honor. Starting now. <laughs> yes, sir. Let's wait. Mr. Howard is quick. Let's wait for uh, the, uh, his radioactive. Spider juice may not be working on the back, so we'll let him have a few more moments. So, Leslie or Misty, if either one of you are aware of this, have we had more than a 118 page docket in the history of the? Circuit Court. I am not. I cannot remember a docket being this big. Well, I've done this for. I'm not. <laughs> There's, this is, in my opinion, that's just the opposite. It would seem that people don't like you if they load it up like that. So. Now, I do know that Judge Wallace has also had a hundred page docket, but not this big. Well, I think that. What now? He had one on her. Well, now I guess we're going to talk about it. You're going to have to beat it. Oh, which one do you got for? Oh, either one. Oh, we'll just bring one out here. Oh, we would get rid of that? No, there is a lesser docket. That's for the Mr. Stevens motion to withdraw and grant it earlier. I don't remember exactly how much, but. Your Honor, this is Mr. Tesman Rashawn Davis, and 
I may have been premature. I don't know that I told the clerk that we are also going to need file 2020 CR 45. You don't have that up here, do you? That is my fault. I am sorry. But he has two cases pending before the court. We were going to resolve both of them today. Um, in case number 23 CR 208, in which he was just arraigned, that is an assault on a first responder charge, count one, he would be pleading guilty to that or be pleading no contest to that. He would be sentenced to 11 months, 29 days to serve. There is a mandatory statute or a mandatory fine by statute of $5,000. I would ask that the court consider waiving that due to his indigence, if at all possible. Um, count two would be dismissed in settlement. He has pretrial jail credits from May the 25th, 2023 to the present in that case. Count two would be dismissed in settlement. Sign right here for me. I messed up. I just signed this back. In the other case, which we are presently lacking the file, that would be 2020 CR 45. That was a D felony theft and a D felony forgery. Subject to the court's approval, the state has agreed to amend count one to simple misdemeanor theft. That will be 11 months, 29 days, suspended to probation, a $3,000 restitution payment to TriStar Bank, and that will run consecutive to the case I just announced. Case number 208. Count two would be dismissed in settlement. All right, Mr. Davis, raise your right hand. Let's place you under oath. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you give in this case to be the truth, the whole truth, the best part of the truth, here we go? State your full name for the record. Tuzmon Rashawn. Davis. Move that microphone over to where it's right. There you go. Tuzmon Rashawn Davis. Mr. Davis, you are here today on two different indictments. Your lawyer has explained what your agreement is, but have you had a chance to talk it over with your with your attorney? Do you feel like you fully understand what you're charged with and what this agreement encompasses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was with. Uh, it was me and one 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 of my. Uh, an old associate and yes or no and yes mom yeah yeah all right so you understand what's going on yeah okay you understand that you have a right to plead not guilty to this charge and to have a speedy and public trial by jury yeah you understand that if you went to trial you'd have the right to have an attorney and to have one appointed as i've done with a public defender yeah you understand that if you went to trial you would have the right to have <clears throat> i'm sorry that you would have the right to have the jury uh, be advised that you would be presumed to be innocent until such time, if ever, that the state proved your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt to the satisfaction of all 12 jurors and their verdict would have to be unanimous before you could be convicted. Yeah. You understand that if you went to trial, you and your lawyer could confront and cross-examine all the witnesses against you. You could bring in your own witnesses by the use of a subpoena and uh, you, you would be presumed to be innocent. You would not have to testify or prove anything, and there would be no inference of guilt arising because you did not testify at your own trial. Do you understand that? Yes. You understand if you went to trial and you were found guilty of a crime and sentenced for that crime, you could appeal the judgment and the con conviction and the sentence imposed to the Court of Criminal Appeals and have a lawyer appointed to help you with that appeal. Yeah. You understand that by pleading no contest, what you're saying is, I'm not admitting I did anything wrong, but I'm not denying it. And the state's going to tell me what their evidence would be if this case went to trial, and I will find you guilty as a result of those things. Do you understand that? Yes, for but sure. But do you understand you're waiving your right to a trial and to an appeal? Yeah. All right. You understand that's going to result in two convictions, both of which are going to be misdemeanors, but those misdemeanors will be on your record in the future to make more severe the punishment you'll receive if you're ever again convicted of a crime. 
Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you understand everything I've explained to you? Yes, sir. Do you want to plead no contest and give up your right to a trial? Oh, uh, wait, no contest? Yeah, no contest. No contest means you don't, you're not going to contest this case. You're going to take the deal your lawyers worked out. Yeah. Okay. And uh, do you understand, is your decision to plead no contest today voluntary? Anybody um, forcing you to do this? Uh, no, um, not at all. But uh, they put off, they've been putting court off, 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 off. So I haven't really been put on a court date. So, and when I did have a court date and they didn't come grab me. So it was just like, I'm just, okay. oh yeah, you have a court date, but no, yeah. No one comes and says, hey, Tesmon, uh, you have a court date, come show up. Okay. No one comes and grabs me. So I'm like sitting here, you know, thinking, but yeah, that's why I finally got a court date today. So I'm like, okay, cool. So since you I got a court date, you want to grab it while you can and get something done? Yeah. Cause I mean, I don't like beating around the bush. So yeah, pretty much. All right. Well, let's get through this. Um, do you, uh, as far as the court is concerned, you understand that I have to have facts presented to me that will allow me to make the finding of guilt. So I need you to listen as the state tells me what their evidence would be in these two cases if they did go to trial. Yeah. Warner in 2020 CR 45, uh, that is the check case. Um, Mr. De Davis um, cashed a check that was fraudulent um, on, in, a, in the amount of $3,000. And then in case number 2023 CR 208, uh, and that was October the 31st of uh, 2019, Your Honor. Um, and then in 2023, CR 208 on May the 25th of this year here in Dixon, Officer Albright, uh, uh, Deputy Albright responded to Gordon Circle for a possible trespass. When he got to the scene, he encountered Mr. Davis. Um, I think that things kind of uh, escalated and um, Mr. Davis bit Officer Albright on his arm, causing a laceration, and he had to go to the hospital. Well, I'm not asking that you agree with those facts, but do you understand that's what the state would attempt to prove at trial? Yeah, uh, he went to the hospital with me as well, so he he had a gash. I saw it too as well. He had a gash on his arm, so oh. yeah. So uh, do you still wish to plead no contest? Yeah. Are you satisfied with your attorney's services? Yes. You feel like your lawyer's done a good job. They've done it in, on a very sp speedy basis, but you understand that? Um, yeah. Um, yes, yes, sir. Uh, okay. It's been a minute. Howard, do you know of any reason you should not enter this plea? I do not, Your Honor. And Tesman Rashawn Davis in docket number 2020 CR 45, upon your plea to the uh, no contest to the amended charge of misdemeanor theft, to find you guilty, sentence you to 11 months and 29 days in the county jail, suspended on time served. Uh, with $3,000 restitution as a condition of your probation to TriStar Bank. <clears throat> and in docket number 2023, CR 208, upon your plea of no contest to count one, count two is dismissed. I find you guilty of assault on a first responder, order that you be sentenced to 11 months and 29 days in a county jail. That will be to serve. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And a uh, $5,000 fine. I will leave the fine in place, but obviously once he's out, if he's depending on what his circumstances are, we'll determine that. So uh, the second, the 2020 CR 45 that's being suspended will be uh, served consecutively to his 1129 to serve with credit for time served. He's given credit from May 25th, 2023 till today. All right. Thank you, Mr. Davis. We'll have fellow let you out as soon as you finish serving your sentence. Right, who else do we have? Mr. Roberto Quilantan should be on the way out.
have some issue about spending it one vote. Well, this is Mr. Roberto Keelantan. All right, Mr. Mr. Is it Kilantan? Yeah. Mr. Kilantan, you are here today on a charge of uh, driving a suspended license, financial responsibility, and failure to appear. And the state and your lawyer have worked out an agreement that you would be uh, entitled to dispose of your case on time served. There would be no probation. No, sir. So, Mr. Kilantan, if you will raise your right hand and be placed under oath. I do. State your full name for the record. Roberto Quilantan. Mr. Quilantan, you are here, as I explained, on a multi count indictment, but it's driving on a suspended license, financial responsibility, and failure to appear. Court, um, have you seen or been shown a copy of those charges and talked them over with your lawyer? Discussed yes, with Mr. Howard. I think he just got involved in your case, but y'all have a chance to talk about this so you fully understand what you're doing. Yes, sir. Do you understand that you have a right to plead not guilty to this charge and have a uh, speedy and public trial by jury? <clears throat> Do you understand if you went to trial, you would have the right to have an attorney and have one appointed for you? Do you understand if you went to trial, you'd be presumed to be innocent until such time, if ever, the state proved your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt to the satisfaction of all 12 jurors and their verdict would have to be unanimous before you could be convicted. You understand that? Yes, you understand if you went to trial, you and your lawyer could confront and cross-examine all witnesses the state called. You could bring in your own witnesses by using a subpoena. You would be presumed to be innocent. You would not have to testify or prove anything, and there would be no inference of guilt arising because you did not testify at your own uh, trial. You understand that if you were convicted at trial, you could appeal the conviction and the sentence imposed to the Court of Criminal Appeals and have a lawyer appointed to help you with that appeal. Yes, sir. You understand that by pleading guilty, you're waiving your right to a trial and to an appeal. All I'm going to do is to prove what your lawyers worked out. Yes. <clears throat> you understand that's going to result in three misdemeanor convictions that will be on your record in the future and make more severe the punishment you'll receive if you're ever again convicted of a crime. Yes, sir. <clears throat> do you understand all the rights that I've explained to you? Yes. <clears throat> do you want to plead guilty and give up those rights to a trial and to an appeal? Well, do you want to do whatever he said me to ask me to do? You want to take the deal that your lawyers worked out for you? Yes, sir. Basically, it's going to be you're pleading guilty, and they're going to put you on time served and let you out of jail. Yes, sir. Unless you have some other, no. unless you have something else holding you, this is going to end your jail. No, that's it. All right. Um, you understand if you plead guilty, the court of the state could ask you questions about these offenses. If you, uh, if you answer the questions under oath on the record and the presence of your lawyer, your answers could later be used against you in a prosecution for perjury if we find out you're lying under oath. Yes, sir. Is your decision to plead guilty today voluntary? Yes. Anybody forcing you to do this? You understand I have to have facts just presented to me that uh, indicate that you are in fact guilty. Yes, sir. On this particular occasion, were you driving while your license was suspended? Yes. All right. And then you didn't have the insurance card with you to prove that you had insurance, is no. that right? And uh, then you missed a court date of some kind. Yeah, it was in the, the time of COVID. Okay. Um, are you satisfied with your attorney services? Yes, sir. I feel like Mr. Howard very quickly has done a good job of representing you. Yes. Mr. Howard, do you know of any reason you should not take advantage of this agreement? I do not, Your Honor. The Robert, Rob, Roberto Quilantan, docket number 22, CRO 21, on your plea of guilty, I find you guilty of driving a suspended license, financial responsibility, and failure to appear. And each of those, I sentence you to time served. That means that you are eligible to be released today unless you have some other hold. Costs are waived. All right, anybody have anything else? You all want to go out on the square and see if you can round up a few more defendants for us to just take care of to add to our docket? That was really joking when I asked if there was anything else. I, didn't know. I seriously did not want to know anything. Before. But there was one that was supposed to be on the docket today, and that was Tracy Hall. 
Yeah, I just put her on a. I guess the is what is it for? What's the what was why was it on the dock? It's Roger Wainick's motion to withdraw as counsel. And when is it set for trial? Uh, it is set for trial January the tenth. It's set up for November. Okay. Josh, the only one that I noticed is that Dantes Good, which is the main name on the conspiracy case, his name wasn't on the dock. Um, it was. It was. Who was it? Okay. Because I'm not really sure who represents him at this point. Dante, You're not really what? Dantes Good. Dantes he, Good. He was the, he's the leading name on the wiretap. Yeah, I'm, I'm very familiar with it. He was on page 25 of the docket. Philip Massagill. Oh, let's see. That's the name. Okay. I was thinking that Sharif Richards represented him because he has dealt, he dealt with his bond source, but I don't know, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if that was down in General Sessions Court and if he actually has ever put him up here in the circuit. Well, I have him on page 25 as the, the name, but then it's, yes, it's, it's golden please. for us. Has he put in an appearance, a notice of appearance for his circuit court case? Mm -hmm. I have, since that source time, I haven't heard from him. So that's why I was concerned maybe he didn't represent him anymore, only represented him in general sessions. I just didn't want to lose track of it. If I recall correctly, Mr. Good was the primary person upon which the conspiracy was based to distribute the drugs into the Dixon County of the 23rd Judicial District. Yes, he's the one who actually, they had the wire on his phone. I happen to have some knowledge of those things. And what's his last name? Good. 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 Okay. I just wasn't sure if he where exactly he was located at this point and who was representing him. From what I'm seeing, uh, he never put in a notice. Is Mr. Good in custody? So he, 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 is, not, he, he is not in custody here. The last I'd heard, he was transported to Davidson County to deal with some cases there, but I don't know where he is, if he's still there or not. Well, then he should have been on our docket for arraignment, nonetheless, correct? Well, and that's why I'm saying, at some point in time, was he not arraigned? Was he not arraigned? I feel like he would have been. Let's pull a file and look at, are uh, you going to be here tomorrow morning? I think we've got one or two things, right? Well, Daphne's story and whatever else. Yeah, we got tomorrow. Daphne's story and Carrie Gibson tomorrow. Yeah. Both of those are Jake Lockers, aren't they? I mean, I don't, I don't have any cases, but I can certainly come over. And well, I just want to pull a file and find out what the status is with Mr. Good being the primary person on the conspiracy case. We need to get him arraigned to make him aware of the fact, you know, what his status is with his attorney and find out whether or not they've been advised of this March 1st date. So, you know, I got to thinking about how we're going to try that. We may have to move to the fairgrounds because it'll be during March 1st will be during school. I can't use the football field, but we may be able to use one of the fairgrounds pavilions. I'm sure we can make it work. Sarah. Just a second. I have good. Here's he is still in Davidson County. Yeah. He's been there since March 14th. And Dante's good was arraigned on March the 10th. Mm -hmm. That's okay. so he's been arraigned on March the 10th. Does it show he has a lawyer? Yes, yes it's showing S.S. Richards. All right, Mr. Richards is, or S.S. Richards, he or she is the attorney of record. That's what we it's just showing. need to make sure that they're aware of the, of the uh, March 1st and 2020, February the 20th dates. I will send them an email. All right, got all the questions. Answered then. 
We stand adjourned. Pat Morant with a TBI at the free hit chain. Good. Did they send it to you? Yes, just printed it. What is she doing? Jennifer, what is the Daffy story in the party sign tomorrow? And the other one's supposed to play. I believe so. Oh, yeah. yeah.